So guys what if Naruto and Sona Sitri want revenge on Konoha in high school movie? Seraphal Leviathan hummed happily and cheerful as she entered the clearing in the massive forest she was exploring. Opening her bright purple eyes, Seraphal looked around, her pigtails swaying as she looked back and forth, making sure that she was not followed, humming, the petite girl with generous breasts, and dressed in a pink magical girl outfit smiled happily when she saw she wasn't followed. It was bad enough that she was really famous with her status as a Mao, and her famous TV show Magical Girl Leva Tan, coming to this clearing was the best way to clear her head, get privacy, despite the fact that she enjoyed the attention, and of course to unwind, besides, this section of the forest that she found in the human world was her super secret special spot. No one knew about except for one person, although, it did sadden her that the other person who knew about this place was trapped here. Smiling happily as she cheered herself up, the pink clad girl placed her hand in front of her. Her palm held open, a moment later, a large barrier blocked her, but Seraphal wasn't a Mao for nothing, moving her hand in an unzipping motion, the barrier opened, and the girl grinned as she entered, the hole she made closing up moments after, as she walked through the barrier, the entire scenery changed from a large forest, in a beautiful clearing complete with a large lake, cherry blossoms littered the air as the clearing had large sakura trees along the edges of the lake. In the middle of the large lake was a small patch of land, with the largest tree she had ever seen in her life, the sheer length of it reaching at least a few hundred meters into the sky, at the top of the tree seemed to be a large spore of some kind, though, to her it seemed more like a rose that just didn't bud yet. Sarah Chan, you're a bit late, a male voice spoke from behind her. Giggling sheepishly, Sarah Fall turned around to face the man who spoke to her, Sorry Naru Tan, I had to avoid so many of my fans to get here, IT took me nearly an hour, and even then they still didn't let up. Seraphal explained a bit childishly, sticking her tongue out as she giggled sheepishly. Naruto shook his head, smiling in amusement at the black-haired beauty, Seraphal smmiled the male, getting a good look at him, it appears he still wore the same attire when she first met him, to be honest, Seraphal couldn't imagine him in any other clothing besides the ones he was dressed in at the moment. The blonde-haired male wore a black bodysuit with a small orange sun embedded in the middle of it, over his bodysuit, he wore an orange coat with black flames licking the bottom. And the sleeves, he wore black sandals on his feet that had an orange stripe adorning the middle, on his forearms, he wore orange gauntlets, a grinning fox head embedded on them, his golden blonde hair fell over his shoulders, two bangs framing his face as the rest fell over his forehead and occasionally swayed into his eyes, whisker marks on his face, three on each cheek, his sapphire blue eyes stared into Seraphal's purple ones confidently, and with amusement. I am sure that you did Seraphal, but you're safe here no need to worry about fanboys, Naruto said with a grin, now come here, the blonde gestured. Eyes brightening, Seraphal leapt towards the blonde, arms spread out, Naru tan time. Yay! Engulfing the blonde in a tight hug, she smiled happily as she snuggled her cheek against the blonde's, her generous bust pressing onto his chest. Chuckling, Naruto fought down the blush stained on his cheeks, and instead returned the hug the girl was giving him, so tell me Sarah Chan. How have you been? Anything interesting happened? He asked. Seraphal placed a finger on her chin and adopted a thinking face, making her look extremely cute, I've been great. As for if anything interesting happened? Hum, I heard from my little sister that Rias Chan had just gotten a new pawn recently, if I remember right, his name was, Hoyaku Isen? No, Kakugoki Insen? No, was it Hagomo Kana? No, hum, ah, it was Hyodo Ise. I think, Seraphal said cutely, giggling to herself as she tried to remember if that name was correct or not, chuckling. Naruto allowed himself to laugh at her dizziness, finding it cute and funny. Seeing Naruto laugh, Seraphal grinned, happy to see one of her most favorite people in the world laugh. The blonde's laugh was like music to her ears, and she loved the sound of it, she could listen to it forever, and never get tired of it. Oh Sarah Chan, you always know how to make me laugh, Naruto chuckled, patting the smaller girl on the head as she beamed at him. The two continued talking for the next two hours, speaking about fun things they did, and other things they could do with their large amount of free time, the two sat under the sakura trees as they chatted happily, happy to just be in each other's presence as they laughed and joked. Anything else interesting happen? Naruto asked after Seraphal finished telling him of the present and future episodes she'll be doing of her TV show. Yes. Seraphal answered, grinning childishly as she made a show of twirling around, my hit show Magical Girl Livia Tan is getting its first movie. She exclaimed, grinning with excitement, I hope it will be one of many to come in the future. Nodding, Naruto grinned a little childishly himself, well, 
If anyone can help you get more movies in the future, it's you, magical girl Livia Tan. The blonde said, beaming. Seraphal launched herself at the blonde, wrapping him in a tight hug. Naru Tan has always believed in me. I think that deserves reward, she exclaimed, Naruto blinked. Reward? There's no nay that was shocked silent when Seraphal suddenly leaned up and gave a strong kiss to his neck. Naruto remained frozen before his eyes trembled with embarrassment as he flushed, Seraphal kept her lips on the blonde's neck for several more moments, sucking on it slightly and biting it just a bit before she let go with a loud pop, grinning as she saw the blonde's embarrassmented face, she giggled happily as she saw the handy work, the hickey mark on the blonde's neck wouldn't go away for a while despite his healing abilities, she made sure of it by adding magic into that kiss. Does Naru Tan like his reward? Seraphal asked, grinning as her eyes brightly stared into her favorite blonde. Stilling blushing, Naruto stuttered, W well, I it was I interesting, he replied. Does Naru Tan want another one? Seraphal whispered into his ear, eyes gleaming as she battered her eyelashes, Naruto sputtered, W well, T that is T to say, um, I Naruto was once again prevented from speaking as Seraphal kissed him full on on the lips, her lips slowly moving against his own as she silently gestured for him to do the same. Soon enough she got her wish as the blonde began moving his lips in sync with hers, making the black-haired Mao happy beyond belief as the two closed their eyes, shifting until she was straddling the blonde, Seraphal deepened the kiss as she placed her hands upon his shoulders for support, the blonde's arms wrapped around her waist to help support her in place, continuing to move their lips against one another's, Seraphal moaned lightly as Naruto's hands squeezed her butt. Feeling something brush against her lips, Seraphal opened her mouth, letting Naruto's tongue slip into her mouth and letting it play with hers, moaning, she used her tongue to play with Naruto's, and their two tongues gently began playing with one another as they kissed, their tongues gently wrapped against one another, their saliva being exchanged as they occasionally slurped. Hum. Naru Tan tastes slurp as slurp delicious slurp Seraphal managed to get out in between kisses, separating their lips, their faces stayed close together as they breathed to regain precious air, while their lips separated, their tongues did not as they played in the open, their saliva dripping down their chins as their tongues continued to gently play. Pushing Naruto back until he was lying on his back. Seraphal pulled her face away, their tongues unable to play due to the growing distance, gathering saliva in her mouth, Seraphal lowered herself again, and pressed her lips against the blonde, the two opening their mouths as their lips pressed, using this as her chance, Seraphal allowed the gathered saliva she had to make its way into Naruto's mouth, the blonde slurping it all up as she did so, their tongues playing once more, the two moaned together as they kissed. Sarah Chan slurp your slurp taste slurp as slurp wonderful slurp Naruto managed to say, saliva trailing down his cheek as he remained in liplock with the black haired, purple eyed beauty, moaning. Seraphal responded by pulling the blonde closer, their kiss deepening even more if at all possible. Seraphal's eyes opened in surprise when she felt something hard brush against her lower regions. It took a moment for her to realize that Naruto's crotch was also where her lower region was. Getting an idea, the black haired girl slowly began grinding herself on the blonde's crotch, the two of them moaning a little more loudly as they both felt the pleasure from the action, caressing the blonde's cheek. Seraphal couldn't stop herself from continuously grinding her scared area on the blonde's restrained rod, continuously moaning as they remained in liplock as she grinded him. Seraphal began aware of the fact of Naruto's hands slowly trailing up her back and her sides. She moaned slightly at the feel of his touch on her smooth skin through the fabric of her clothes, for the first time, Seraphal truly hated her clothes and she wished they were gone. Moaning as his hands reached her breasts, she gasped in the blonde's mouth as he squeezed her breasts, letting go of her breasts, letting them press against his chest as they did originally, the blonde moved his hands up until they reached Seraphal's head, where he began to gently caress her hair through his fingers. Seraphal slurped some of the blonde's saliva as she still grinded her snatch on the blonde's rod, the purple-eyed girl arched her back, increasing the pace of her grinding as she felt an increase in pressure in her loins, when the pressure became too great, Seraphal separated her lips from Naruto, a long trail of saliva keeping them connected, before she let out a small scream of pleasure as she climaxed, her fluids drenching her panties, and leaving a large spot on Naruto's crotch area. Panting. Seraphal lowered her head and gave Naruto a few more gentle kisses with the blonde returning them just a gently, raising her head slightly, their tongues still gently played with one another as Seraphal allowed more of her saliva to trail down her tongue, and into the blonde's mouth, slurping all her saliva, Naruto leaned up and pressed his lips against Seraphal's, allowing his gathered saliva to make its make into her mouth, the black-haired beauty slurping it all up eagerly. Separating, Seraphal sighed happily as she rested her head on the blonde's chest, 
listening to his heartbeat as she admired its sound, Naruto placed his chin on Seraphal's head, his nose catching her scent. What brought this on? The blonde asked, thinking for a moment as she laid on his chest. Seraphal finally answered, Naru Tan, I've been visiting you for centuries, after I first stumbled upon here after the Great War, for centuries I visited, me telling you stories of the outside world, as you listened, you, telling me stories of a time before devils, and angels came to be, you were one of the oldest beings in the world, probably as old of the infinity dragon herself, pausing, Seraphal smiled at blonde, who was listening to her every word. During the three centuries I visited you, I learned so much about you, and you learned so much about me, those three centuries were the best in my life, all the time, I would wonder how you were doing when I wasn't with you, I would always wonder was he alright? What if something happened to him? I, I love you Naru Tan, she exclaimed, hugging the blonde tightly as she buried her face into his chest. Eyes widened in shock, Naruto stared at the girl who was clinging to him, softly caressing her head, Naruto found himself smiling down at the girl fondly, his eyes showing a hint of love, this girl, who had visited him for three centuries, who single-handedly destroyed all the loneliness he had felt he became bounded to this place, lowering his head, the blonde softly kissed her head, gaining Seraphal's attention as she looked at him with bright purple eyes. I love you to Sarah Chan, he said sincerely, smiling widely, Seraphal leaned up and planted a loving and gentle kiss with the blonde, the blonde returning it as he gently caressed her cheek. Separating after several long moments for precious air, Seraphal leaned on his chest, a bright and happy smile adorning her features as she listened to his heartbeat, after several minutes of staying in that position in his arms, Seraphal spoke. Nerut Tan. She began, earning a questioning hum from the male. Why are you trapped here? You told me lots of stories, but never much about you or how you were trapped here. It was silent for several long minutes, and Seraphal feared that she may have crossed a line, but her doubts were quenched when she felt and heard the blonde sigh. Tightening his grip on Seraphal, Naruto looked up at the massive tree, a forlorn look in his eyes, my tale begins at the night of my birth, and so, he began his tale, starting at his birth. He told Seraphal how a masked man kidnapped shortly after he was born, forcing his father to briefly leave his mother behind as he rescued him and ensured his safety, how the masked man ripped out a sealed entity that was sealed within his mother since she was a child, how his father rescued his mother and placed her alongside him, how his father fought the masked man until he forced him to retreat, thus leaving his father to contend with the fearsome Kayubi no Kitsune. He continued, telling how his father sealed the beast within him with his mother's help and as their last act as parents, they sacrificed themselves so that he may live. from there, Naruto began to tell Seraphal of his childhood, he hesitated, but told her anyway, telling her how the villagers constantly overcharged him, how they ignored his very existence, how lonely his childhood was seeing as he couldn't make any friends. When Seraphal heard this, she nearly teared up, but she kept herself strong as she listened, for one moment in her life, the Mao who was so cheerful and carefree, for one single moment, Seraphal despised humans, however, her brief moment of hatred was quickly taken care of when she stomped it out of her mind in favor of Naruto continuing his story. He told her of how he came to see one of his teacher, Aruka, as a surrogate older brother, of how he later passed the academy after being lied of a test by his other teacher Mizuki, his team assignments with the guy he had a dislike for, and a girl he had been crushing on since childhood, meeting his teacher and team leader Kakashi, he told her of Kakashi's test, to which Seraphal briefly giggled at, their assigned D ranks until finally he told her of their first C ranked mission that later turned A ranked. The encounter with Zabuza and Haku, their impact on him, and their eventual deaths as they died human instead of the tools they believed themselves to be, from there, he told Seraphal of the Chunin exams, all the way up until the death of his grandfather figure the Sandame Hokage, from there, he explained how he was chosen, by Jiraiya, to acquire Tsunade of the Sanin for her to take the mantle of Hokage. He told her of Tsunade's reluctance to take the hat, and how eventually she accepted the responsibility after a long fight with Orochimaru and his apprentice, from there, Naruto told Seraphal that after taking the mantle of Hokage, how Team 7 had many adventures after her taking the seat, how slowly but surely, Team 7 was beginning to fall apart as Sasuke distanced himself slowly. How Sasuke defected, and how Naruto was forced to confront him at the Valley of the End, their long and admittedly epic battle, how Sasuke won because Naruto hesitated and instead scratched his forehead protector, from there, he spoke of his three-year training journey with Jiraiya, his training and the fun things they did together. From there, he spoke of how his fellow friend and brother, Gara, was in danger due to an attack by the Akatsuki, how they saved Gara and brought him back from the dead after he had died for a short and limited time at the cost of the life of Granny Chio. He continued on, 
telling her of how Sasuke eventually killed his brother, Itachi, and turned his rage and hatred towards Konoha. He spoke of how Tobi, the same masked man who killed his parents, manipulated Sasuke, turning him into a revenge-driven monster. He told her of how Pain, the supposed leader of Akatsuki, killed Jiraiya, and his training to master Senjutsu, something that shocked Seraphal. He told her of his battle with Pain, briefly meeting his father after giving into his rage and the outcome. After that, he continued, telling her of the Five Cage Summit that was formed after Sasuke supposedly defeated and captured Killer B, brother of the Rakage and Jinchuriki of the Hachibi, but later found it to be a ruse. He told her of how Sasuke attacked the Five Cage Summit in search of Danzo, the unofficial Rokudame, unofficial, because Danzo did not receive the ceremony. He told her of how Sasuke took on the Five Cage, and later pursued Danzo, how he killed the man, and his own brief confrontation with Sasuke. Shortly after, he told Seraphal of how Tobi who now called himself Madara, or as he claimed to be, declared war on the five great nations. He told her of his training with Killer B to master the power of the Kyubi, his battle with the nine-tailed entity, briefly meeting his mother and learning the truth from her, his defeated of the Kyubi, and master its power. He told her that he later joined the war after convincing the Rakage, and how he and Killer B became great assets in the war. He also told her of how Madara was using Kabuto to bring to life the dead to right alongside his white Zetsu army. Soon, he reached the part of where Madara, the real one, appeared in his decimation of nearly a quarter of their forces with merely Taijutsu, a few fire-style jutsu, and the use of his brief use of the Suzano, he told of how somehow, Madara was able to activate the Rinnegan, the same eyes that Pain held, the fearsome godlike power Madara wielded as he used massive meteors to completely decimate the remainder of their forces. He told her of how the five cage soon appeared, and how they would fight the real Madara while he fought the fake one. He continued, telling her of his long battle with Tobi how he finally befriended the Kyubi, and how after a long and exhausting battle, he finally managed to break the mask he wore with the help of Gai, Kakashi, and Killer B. Finally, Tobi's identity was revealed to be Obito, and Seraphal was shocked to hear that it was Kakashi's best friend and teammate who was thought to be dead. He told her that shortly after Tobi's identity was revealed, Madara appeared next to Obito, to which Naruto learned soon after that the five cage were brutally defeated by the ancient Uchiha. Thus, began the long fight with Madara and Obito, as they received multiple close calls due to the raw power and battle-hardened intellect of Madara Uchiha, and the dangerous skills of Obito, how later in the fight, how hopes seemed to be lost, the rest of the ninja alliance all came to assist in the battle with the two Uchiha, and the recently revived Jubi. The valiant struggle to stop the Jubi, and how all seemed to be useless until Obito finally became the Jinchuriki of the Jubi and shortly after the arrival of the revived past Hokages of Konoha along with Sasuke and his group, following the shocking appearance of Orochimaru. Finally, after a long and grueling battle, they had finally managed to defeat Obito, but soon after Obito was betrayed by Madara as the ancient Uchiha fully revived himself as he gained back his blood and flesh, how Madara, after being fully revived, once again began decimating most of the Shinobi alliance even without his eyes, and how after regaining his eyes he defeated the nine biju with ease and absorbed them into the Gadu Mazo along with Naruto's Kyubi, and Killer B's Hachibi. How Madara became the Jinchuriki of the Jubi, and he had finally gained the true power of the Sage of Six Paths, finally, he told her of how he and Sasuke briefly met with the Sage of Six Paths, and their power boosts from the ancient Sage, he told her of how Madara once again was godlike in his power and how he defeated later defeated Guy after he unlocked all inner gates, and how he planned to completely destroy Guy's body had he not intervened as Sasuke appeared beside him moments after. Afterwards, the long fight that followed, and their failure to stop the moon's eye plan, how Madara planned to completely destroy them, before he was betrayed by Black Zetsu, who revealed that he was actually working for Kagaya, how Kagaya was revived and despite their power boosts they stood no chance against the godlike woman whose power surpassed even that of the Jubi. He told her of their long fight with Kagaya and how she constantly transferred them all between dimensions, Obito's death after he sacrificed himself to save his life and Kakashi's, Kakashi's power up after gaining both of Obito's Sharingan, and the hideous transformation Kagaya underwent. Finally, he told of how despite everything, they could not seal the transformed Kagaya, and thus another solution was formed, with the remaining chakra of the Biju, and the borrowed chakra of Sasuke, Kakashi and Sakura, he sealed off the dimension they were all in. There, they planned to let the transformed Kagaya remain there for eternity while they escaped using Kakashi's Kamui, they nearly escaped, had the transformed Kagaya not tried to smash them all to bits, it was in that moment that Naruto threw them all through the portal, while he alone remained trapped with beast Kagaya had become. It was there, the Naruto told her that for millions of years. 
He and Kagaya continued to fight, the blonde's blood and his powerful chakra, especially the Kyubi within granted him something close to immortality, unable to age, but still able to die, with the long and endless fighting with Kagaya, he had finally defeated her by sealing her entire form into a tree, and created a seal that siphoned her chakra channeling it into the seal keeping both her and the place they resided in sealed off from the world. So for millions of years I've been here, making sure that Kagaya never broke free from her bonds, and to ensure that if she ever does, it'll be here to seal her again, Naruto ended, looking Seraphal's eyes as she looked at in sadness. Millions of years, Seraphal murmured, that's a long time, she suddenly exclaimed, you're an Oji chan, she giggled. Pouting. Naruto crossed his arms, oh an Oji chan am I? He began, I guess Sarah chan doesn't want any more kisses from this Oji chan, panicking, Seraphal laughed nervously. And no, Naruto tan's not old, he's well aged, she responded, chuckling. Naruto cupped Seraphal's cheeks before he lowered his head, his lips claiming hers gently as Seraphal happily returned. Separating, Seraphal looked at the massive tree for a moment, can she ever get out? She asked, worried if Kagaya was ever released from her bonds. Naruto scoffed slightly, I placed over thousands of seals on her over the years to ensure she never escapes her prison, besides, even if she did escape, she would need to find a way out of this dimension that I sealed us in, even then, I've placed at least a million seals to ensure that nothing ever gets in or out, he said, staying silent for a moment, he looked at Seraphal with a deadpanned look. Come to think of it, I am still trying to figure out how on earth you keep getting in and out of here Sarah Chan, the blonde stated, giggling, Seraphal winked. Nothing can stop the great Levia Tan, she said with a carefree twirl, smiling, Naruto chuckled as he ran his hand through her black hair, Seraphal falling onto his lap as she happily leaned into his touch. Opening her eyes briefly, Seraphal looked into Naruto's sapphire blue eyes, her purple ones pleading slightly, Naru Tan, can you come with me? Out of this place, away from here, and into the outside world? She asked softly. Frowning for a moment, Naruto looked at the massive tree as he mulled it over. What about her? I have to be here in the event she does break free from her bonds, he stated. You said it yourself. It's almost practically impossible for her to get out, she exclaimed, besides, you can still visit here, to make sure, she told him. Blinking in surprise at the sense her logic made, Naruto chuckled as he scratched his head, you make a fair point Sarah Chan, he said, very well then, I'll go, he smiled at Seraphal's cheer of happiness and she bounced up and down on his lap like a child on sugar, on one condition, he told her, making her freeze in her tracks. Grinning as he leaned down to her ear, Naruto gently licked her ear lube, making her moan, remember when you told me of the evil peace system, at her nod, he continued, I want you to make me a member of your peerage, he said, making Seraphal gasp in shock, sure, she still had her complete set of prototype evil pieces, but that was because she never really had an interest in forming her own peerage. W.Y. She asked, grinning, Naruto continued licking her ear lube as he answered, I want everyone to know that I belong to the wonderful and fabulous Levia Tan, he whispered in her ear, gently biting her ear as she moaned, what say you say Ra Fall? He drawled out her name, moving down to her neck as he kissed and nibbled on it. Moaning. Seraphal pressed herself against the blonde, arms circling around him as melted her petite body against his, her large breasts pressing against his chest, flushing as she began to kiss and nibble on his neck, Seraphal answered, Okay. Only if Naru Tan promises to make sure people knows that I belong to you, she told her. Already done, the blonde responded, looking at the hickey he left on her neck, he grinned slightly as he channeled his chakra on that hickey to ensure that it never came off, that, and it was also working as a Hiraishan seal. What? His dad could place a seal on you just by touching you, why couldn't he go beyond that and improve upon it? Naruto was almost positive that if you so much as touch him anywhere on his body, he could mark you with a Hiraishan seal, almost, considering he has yet to fully test that out. Smiling, Seraphal grabbed her magical girl staff, making Naruto wonder what she was doing. Placing her hand on the top of her staff, Seraphal opened it revealing it to be a secret compartment, placing her finger and thumb inside, she later pulled out a chess piece from it. A secret compartment in your staff that leads to a small pocket dimension, Naruto murmured in surprise and awe, very impressive Sarah chan the blonde told her. Looking at Naruto with a soft smile, she gestured for the blonde to lay on his back, follow her order, the blonde laid himself on the grass, feeling surprised as Seraphal straddled him. She smiled down at the blonde, giving him a loving look of reassurance as she placed the chess piece on his chest, smiling happily as the chess piece glowed, she began the chant as a circle appeared beneath the two. I, 
Seraphal Leviathan, accept you, Naruto Uzumaki, as a part of my peerage. May you live new your life happily as my queen, my love. With that said, Seraphal lowered her head, and gave Naruto a loving and gentle kiss as the chess piece began sinking into her body. Shuddering slightly, Naruto focused on the kiss as his body underwent through the changes of being reincarnated into a devil, he could feel something twitch on his back, and he felt himself growing stronger as his body was changed from human to devil, his already long life span increasing even more as he felt his powers increase even more due to him receiving the queen piece. Once it was over, Naruto readily returned Seraphal's kiss as his arms wrapped around her petite body, sitting up, he looked into Seraphal's purple eyes as they separated, a trail of saliva connected them as their tongues returned to their mouths, the trail of saliva snapped, and Naruto looked behind him when he heard the sounds of cloths ripping. He could only stare as the back of his clothes were destroyed after his newly gained bat-like wings took the liberty of freeing themselves, hearing giggling, Naruto stared at Seraphal, seeing her wings free, but not a scratch on her clothing. Devils wear special clothes that lets our wings bypass the fabric to let them free without destroying clothes in the process, she told him, I'll have new clothes custom tailored for you. Thank you Sarah Chan. Taking her hand, Seraphal squeaked as the blonde pulled her down to sit in his lap, their wings disappearing into their backs as they cradled each other, shifting in his lap until she was facing him, Seraphal wrapped her arms around his neck, pulling him down a passionate kiss as the blonde placed his hands on her waist, moaning. They deepened the kiss as Seraphal's lower regions rubbed itself on his crotch again. Pulling back slightly, Naruto allowed his tongue to play with Seraphal's tongue in the open for several long moments, before he pulled back, the black haired beauty pouting at the blonde. Chuckling, Naruto stood, Seraphal squeaking as she wrapped her legs around his waist to secure herself as the blonde placed his hands on her thighs, looking up in her eyes as she looked down, Naruto smiled, Well, Sarah Chan, I don't know about you but I for one am curious about the outside world, since I've been trapped here for so long," he told her. Smiling, Seraphal kissed the blonde for a moment before she released her hold, Naruto setting her on the ground gently, quickly holding his hand as their fingers intertwined, she pulled him along eagerly, come on Naruto-tan. I can't wait for you to meet my Oka-san and Oto-san, she said excitedly. Freezing as the blonde placed his lips near her ear, his hot breath making her shudder as she felt a tingle of pleasure down her spine. She blushed slightly as the blonde spoke huskily in her ear. Shouldn't I call them Oka San and Oto San as well? Sarah Chan, the blonde stated more than asked. Blushing more deeply, Seraphal smiled happily as she continued to drag the blonde with her. Yes. Oka San and Oto San would love it if you did, she said happily, chuckling. Naruto gave Seraphal a kiss on her cheek as the two Seraphal opened the barrier by making a small rip in the air. Naruto stared, still dumbfounded as to how the girl did that. Leaving the thought behind, Naruto stared into Seraphal's eyes as they sparkled brightly, with a soft smile, he and the girl left through the portal as it sealed shut behind them. The House of Sitri was one of the 72 pillars of the underworld, of the 72 noble families, they ranked among the highest seeing as the former heir was now the current leviathan, they had the same fame and prestige as the Gremory clan, and while they are as affectionate as the Gremory, they were affectionate to the point where they also considered their servants as close friends and family. Servants of the Seatree House served the current lord and mistress happily, and some of them had the honor of being Seraphal's playmate when she was still growing up. Even so, the veteran servants found Seraphal's childish antics to be exhausting whenever she visited and stayed the night. They were glad that the second daughter of the of Lord Seatree and the mistress was more mature than Seraphal, then again, they found Seraphal's childish personality refreshing when they had a bad day. The two guards at the front gate took their jobs very seriously. Out of all the servants, they were the most serious when on duty, but pretty laid back when they weren't, you can imagine their surprise when a magical circle appeared in front of them with the leviathan symbol glowing in the middle, they knew who was coming, so they did not tense or anything of the sort, instead they stood there casually, as if it were an everyday thing. Imagine their surprise when Seraphal appeared with a handsome young man in her company. When they saw the young mon's blonde hair, they thought him to be a member of the Fenex clan, but something told them that their assumption was wrong. The young man's sapphire blue eyes looked at Seatree Manor with childish curiosity, before he turned his attention towards the two guards and gave them both a warm smile. The two guards noted the beaming smile Seraphal gave the blonde whom turned his attention to her. Naru Tan. Welcome to Seatree Manor. Seraphal said excitedly, eyes sparkling as she looked at the blonde, sharing a small glance with his fellow guard, the guard on the right side as he coughed into his hand. Seraphal turned her attention to the guard. Head tilting slightly as Naruto joined her in looking at the guard, Seraphal-sama, a pleasure to have you with us again, 
The guard began professionally. May I inquire as to who is the young man with his, if I may? He asked politely. Smiling brightly as she held Naruto's hand with their fingers intertwining, Seraphal answered, This is Naruto Uzumaki, my new queen of my peerage, and someone very special to me. Blinking, the two guards looked at their intertwined hands, and they looked at Seraphal's bright and happy look, looking, at the blonde, they noted the sheepish, but happy look in his eyes as well, smiling slightly, the guards bowed, a pleasure to meet you Naruto-sama. They saw Naruto raise his hand in a reassuring manner eyes warmly gazing upon them as he smiled kindly, please, you do not need to bow in front of me, also, feel free to simply refer to me as simply Naruto, he told them warmly. The two guards stood straighter, of course Naruto-sama, they both said, eyes twinkling in mirth as the blonde gave them a deadpan look, I trust you are here to see Lord and Lady Sitri, please, head on in Seraphal sama Naruto-sama, he told them. Smiling brightly, Seraphal began dragging the blonde along with her, the blonde giving her a smile of mirth, come one Naru Tan. Time to see Oka Chan and Oto Chan, she said excitedly. As the two passed through the gates, the two guards remained silent for several moments, I like that guy, the second guard said. Chuckling slightly, the first guard shook his head, I do as well, he said, although, something tells me things are never dull with him around, he mused, the second guard shrugged. As long as Seraphal Sama is happy right, he said. Yeah. As long as she's happy, the first agreed, inside the manor, Seraphal happily dragged the blonde through the halls, the servants and maids looking at them in bewilderment and surprise as they watched the petite girl with generous breasts drag the taller and handsome young man through the halls, finally reaching the door to the main room, Seraphal opened the door with a bright smile on her face. Oto Chan! Oka Chan! The girl shouted cheerfully. Two figures sitting on their chairs blinked at her entrance before they smiled warmly, ah, Seraphal! How are you my daughter? The male of the two asked, he had black hair that was shoulder length, a bit messy, but also firmly combed, dark grey eyes that showed kindness and warmth as he saw his daughter. The other figure, female, had long black hair that reached her waist, her bangs were in a style similar to Seraphal's, and her purple eyes beamed happily at the sight of her daughter. I am fine too Chan. Seraphal answered, smiling brightly. That's good, Lord Citri spoke, smiling as he gazed upon his daughter. Oh my, who's this strapping young man with you Seraphal? Lady Steery asked, standing beside her husband as she closely examined the blonde next to her daughter, blinking. Lord Citri looked at the blonde next to his daughter, and he curiously tilted his head slightly. Giggling, Seraphal clung onto Naruto's arm, beaming at her parents, Tu Chan, Ka Chan. This is Naruto Uzumaki, my queen and someone very, very special to me, she told them. Blinking in bewilderment, Lord Citri, and Lady Citri remained silent for several long moments, before they suddenly grinned happily, my daughter has finally gotten herself a man. Lord Citri stated, crying anime tears as he grinned with excitement, hello my future son-in-law, you can call me Tu Chan. Lady Citri squealed, bringing both Naruto and Seraphal into a bone-crushing hug, yes. Finally, grandchildren are coming. When will you two tie the knot? When's the wedding? I must know, she told them excitedly as she released them. Seraphal blushed as she gave Naruto a beautiful smile, Naruto laughed at the antics of Seraphal's parents, finding that he rather liked the both of them, caressing her cheek, Naruto leaned down and gave Seraphal a kiss as Lady Citri squealed as she quickly snapped a picture. For the remainder of the day, both Naruto and Seraphal stayed with Lord and Lady Citri, the blonde feeling right at home with the two as they had fun like a family should, when they actually bothered to check the time, it was already midnight, and it was agreed that Seraphal and Naruto would remain for the night, the couple sharing a bed as Lady Citri snapped another picture of them sleeping together, all while Lord Citri was content with chuckling silently in amusement as his wife's antics. So that's Sarah Chan's little sister huh? Naruto mused, the blonde was in a tree that was on Kuhouse Academy's school grounds, his form unnoticed as he sat on a branch, his back leaning against the bark of the three, smirking slightly, the blonde's form disappeared as he activated his camouflage jutsu to hide his presence, just in time as Sona looked out the window of her classroom her purple eyes narrowing upon the tree he was sitting on. Releasing his camouflage technique once she looked away, Naruto chuckled, she's far more observant than I gave her credit for, the blonde mused, shifting his eyes, with his enhanced eyesight, he looked into another widow a few classroom away from Sona's class, he soon came upon a girl with crimson red hair sitting in front of the window, her turquoise eyes paying close attention to her class instructor. Once again activating his camouflage technique, 
The crimson-haired girl turned her head and looked at his tree with narrowed eyes, once again releasing his technique when she looked away. Naruto chuckled briefly. How interesting. Sathat's Rias Gremory, huh? Impressive. It appears she's just as observant as Sona. No wonder they are rivals, he mused with mirth. Chuckling as he looked at Sona, the blonde began to mentally compare the two sisters, he could see the similarities, the both of them having black hair and purple eyes, but that seemed to be where the similarities ended, Sona had much shorter hair than her sister who had long hair, she wore glasses, and she didn't quite have a chest size as generous of Seraphals, Naruto could also tell she had a serious personality, a stark opposite to her sister's childish and carefree attitude. Smirking. Naruto's eyes glinted with mischief, he couldn't wait to tease the younger sister of Seraphal, hearing the sound of a bell going off, Naruto tilted his head slightly as he noted the students all began getting up, and moving about, he rose his eyebrow when he noted Sona and Rias both get up briskly, and disappeared into the hallways. Shrugging, the blonde leaned back on his tree, closing his eyes as he placed his hands over his head, moments later, the blonde almost smiled as he activated his camouflage once again just as Rias and Sona arrived and stared at the many branches on the tree, specifically, the branch the blonde was sitting on. Come out now, we know you're there, Sona demanded, Rias frowning slightly alongside her, smiling in slight surprise, Naruto looked around, making sure that no other student were near the tree before he released his camouflage technique, when his form was revealed, the two girls tensed, their eyes narrowed slightly as they gave him cautious glares. A pleasure to meet you Sona Chan, Rias Chan, he greeted them lightly, smiling at the girls, their eyes narrowed, the two kings frowned at them. How do you know of us? Rias asked, chuckling, Naruto answered, you two were quite notable in the underworld, however, I learned more about Sona seeing as a certain someone always speaks highly of her, of course, when hearing about you, Sona, by extension ill learn about you, Rias. Narrowing her eyes, Sona wondered who the blonde was referring to, a person who spoke highly of her, she could only think of one person, but she immediately dismissed the thought, her sister wouldn't speak with such a stranger unless either she knew them, or they caught her interest and hardly anything caught her interest these days. Who is the person who told you about me? Sona demanded coldly, Rias joining her as she also gave a small glare. Smiling, Naruto saw no problem with giving them a few small hints, I'll give you two small hints, you know the person well, and I am also a piece in their peerage, he told them cryptically, eyes twinkling with mirth as they narrowed their eyes in thought. Well, I must be going now he told them, standing from his leaning position, and Rias, he trailed off, gaining the crimson-haired girl's attention as she saw the warm look the blonde was giving her, congratulations on your pawn's recent victory over Razor, with that said, the blonde turned, and focused on the Hiraishan seal he placed on Seraphal. She should be finished with her filming of her latest episode of her magical girl show, with that thought, the blonde absently placed a Hiraishan seal on the tree as he disappeared into thin air as if he were never there much to the shock of Sona and Rias as they stared in slight disbelief at the spot he occupied. Watching as Seraphal paced back and forth worriedly, Naruto couldn't help but frown, understanding the reason why she was so worried, and just why her eyes held a large amount of concern, and the beginnings of panic and hysteria, Lord, and Lady Sitri were in a similar state, though they had more control over their expressions. Naruto could feel the panic and worry rolling off him in waves however, sighing, the blonde stood, moving towards the still pacing Seraphal, wrapping his arms around her as he reached her, the girl turned, and buried her head into his chest as he held her, softly stroking her hair, Naruto murmured soft words of comfort into her ears. It's all right Sarah chan I am sure Sona will be fine, he whispered to her, still stroking her hair. En Naru Tan, I believe in Sona Tan, I really do, but she's up against Kokebeel, he's one of the generals of the fallen angels for a reason, she told the blonde in concern and worry. Sighing softly, Naruto gently stroked her hair, knowing why she couldn't help her precious sister at the moment, the powerful barrier that Kokebeel erected around Kuo Academy was a truly powerful one, one that even held the power of the Mao at bay for a good long time, Naruto suspected that the barrier would remain strong for at least two days, even while withstanding the attacks of the Mao. It was a truly powerful barrier, however, the Hiraishan seal he placed on that tree back then, the blonde knew that seal would come in handy, but, would that allow him to have a loophole to get inside Kokebeel's barrier? There was only one way to find out. Determination in his eyes, Naruto gently sat Seraphal down next to her parents, much to the girl's confusion as Lord and Lady Sitri watched on curiously, placing a soft kiss on Seraphal's lips before he pulled back moments after. Naru Tan? Seraphal asked in confusion, flashing Seraphal a warm smile, the blonde gave a two-fingered salute to Lord and Lady Sitri, 
I'll make sure Sona is safe, he told them, much to their confusion, giving them one last look, the blonde vanished into thin air, focusing on the Hiraishan seal he placed on the tree back in Kuo. When Naruto's form materialized, the blonde blonde had to lean against the tree he previously occupied as his injuries healed, moving through that barrier with the Hiraishan was surprisingly difficult, it appears that the barrier was also designed to prevent others from simply teleporting in, Naruto had to actively push himself through, otherwise, he wouldn't have made through the barrier, in doing so however, injured him to an extent. Once his burns were healed, the blonde stood, narrowing his eyes in the direction he felt Kokebiel's power, along where Rios and Sona's peerage were, vanishing in a burst of speed, the blonde moved through the school grounds of Kuo, his form a blur as he nearly broke broke the sound barrier, finally he reached the spot where everyone was in mere moments. God is dead. The voice of Kokebiel shouted, narrowing his eyes, Naruto listened carefully from his perch on a roof as Kokebiel explained how God died in the Great War, frowning. Naruto saw the disbelief in everyone's eyes as they registered Kokebiel's words, a blue-haired girl, and an orange-haired girl being the most affected. With your deaths, a new great war shall begin. Kokebiel shouted manically, now die. With that exclamation, the powerful fallen angel general was prepared to chuck a large spear of light he formed in his hands, he would have, had Naruto decided not to interfere. What? Kokebiel shouted in surprise as he felt his forearm being gripped with such strength that he actually winced in pain, turning his head, Kokebiel stared at the man who interfered, the blonde-haired man giving him a small smile, but there was something cold in that smile of his, who are you? Kokebiel asked, forming another light spear in his other hand as Rias and Sona looked at Naruto in surprise. I am Naruto Uzumaki, just call me Naruto though, Naruto told him channeling chakra into his hand as he raised it just in time to catch Kokebiel's light spear, gripping it with his hand, Naruto felt some amusement as everyone's eyes widened in shock at the fact that he was holding Kokebiel's light spear, although, the blonde did wince slightly as he held the spear. Seeing Naruto's wince, Kokebiel grinned slightly, you're not entirely immune to light, he murmured, narrowing his eyes, Naruto clenched his fist, and shattered the light spear in his grip, everyone's eyes widened in surprise as his action, registering that he, a devil, not only held a light spear in his hands but crushed it as well. With the light spear destroyed, Naruto placed his hand at his side while his other hand was still gripping Kokebiel's forearm. Everyone saw the slight burns on Naruto's hand that held the spear, before the burns healed within moments, much to everyone's surprise. So you're Kokebiel? A pleasure to meet one of the fallen angel generals, Naruto spoke out, releasing Kokebiel from his grip. Kokebiel immediately jumped back a few meters away from the blonde, wariness in his eyes as he gazed upon the blonde. He's not entirely immune to light, yet he's a devil, he should nt be able to even withstand the properties of light, it's poisonous to devils after all, and his hair, it's blonde, nearly the same shade as the Phoenix clan, yet he's obviously not a member of the Phoenix, he's a reincarnated devil, the energy I sense from him is not as pure as a pure blood, since he's a reincarnated devil, the question is, who is his master? Kokebiel thought with narrowed eyes. Scoffing as he grinned sadistically, Kokebiel formed two light spears in his hands, pointing them at the blonde. Tell me something Naruto Uzumaki, who is your master? The fallen angel demanded, hearing Kokebiel's demand, Sona and Rias, along with their peerages, listened attentively, curious as to who was the blonde's master. Smirking slightly, Naruto breathed in for a moment before he exhaled, slowly, an orange pigmentation appeared over his eyes, his iris turning yellow as his pupil turned into a horizontal bar, suddenly, a light blue aura washed over the blonde, his power rolling out in waves as everyone felt it and were shocked at the feeling he produced. Kaneko, Rias Rook, shivered violently as her hazel-colored eyes widened in fear, as Senjutsu, she whispered in terror, hearing that, Rias and Sona's eyes widened in shock as they were close enough to hear Kaneko's whisper. S. Senjutsu. Impossible. It said Senjutsu is impossible to control. Kuroka the stray cat is proof of that. How is it that this man is able to retain himself despite using Senjutsu? Who are you? Naruto Uzumaki. Sona thought as she looked at Naruto's form with shock and disbelief. You asked who my king was. Naruto spoke, gaining everyone's attention, wings emerging from his back. Naruto suddenly appeared in front of Kokebiel in an instant, shocking the fallen angel at the speed the blonde moved at. That knowledge is useless to you, Naruto stated, grabbing Kokebiel by the face. The blonde flew through the air, breaking the sound barrier as he did so. Breaking through the barrier Kokebiel created, Naruto continued flying at the speed of sound, 
Flying through the ocean as several islands pass by them, stopping at an uninhabited island, Naruto threw Kokebeel down towards the island, the fallen angel rag dolling through the air as he crashed in the island, floating down towards the large crater that Kokebeel made, Naruto hovered slightly above the ground before his feet gently touched it, wings retracting as he glared into the dust. The dust parted as Kokebeel used his wings to blow the dust aside, the fallen angel's form having large amounts of sand covering him before he brushed it all off quickly scanning the area, catching sight of several huts and house made of wood and straw. Kokebeel glared at the blonde. Where are we? He asked. Welcome, to Nassau, the blonde answered. Kokebeel's eyes widened slightly in shock at the blonde's words, unable to believe what the blonde told him, Nassau? Impossible. Nassau is halfway across the world. There is no way we could have traveled halfway across the world. Yet, as he once again looked at the huts and houses, Kokebeel could not deny the age they held. This island truly was Nassau, one of the main pirate strongholds during the golden age of piracy, scowling. Kokebeel looked at the blonde with renewed wariness. Such speed, he was able to travel nearly halfway across the world within a few moments, just how fast is he? He thought with cold sweat sliding down his neck. Oi, Naruto began, are you ready? This will be our battlefield, here, we can go all out and not worry about the lives of anyone. Oh. Very considerate, Kokebeel complimented but ultimately foolish, with no restraints, it'll crush you where you stand. With that exclamation, Kokebeel released the hold he had over his powers, within an instant his form was bathed in a bright light energy as the sand around him began to pick up and lift from the ground. Narrowing his toad-like eyes, Naruto stopped suppressing his powers, his form being bathed in a dark blue aura of chakra as a small shockwave emerged from him. Widening his eyes, Kokebeel felt himself grow slightly nervous, such raw power, and the feel of this energy, chakra. And not just any chakra, but senjutsu. He thought with a hint of fear, who are you? He demanded again. I guess I can indulge in your curiosity seeing as we are the only ones here, Naruto mused. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Naruto Uzumaki, a sage, and the queen of Seraphal Leviathan, he announced. Kokebeel's eyes widened to epic proportions before a twisted grin appeared over his features as he cackled madly. The Queen of Seraphal Leviathan. This works in my favor. If I can kill you then the war one had hoped in starting will begin. With you dead, Seraphal will want revenge. Prepare to die by my hands Uzumaki. Kokebeel exclaimed, a mad gleam in his eyes as he licked his lips. Oh. Is that right? You wish to start a war? I have no choice but to stop you then, in any case prepare yourself Kokebeel. Naruto spoke taking a taijutsu stance, his knees bent slightly as arms were held at his sides, fists slightly raised, it's been a while since my last fight, so forgive me if I am a bit rough. Kokebeel didn't know what happened, one moment he was standing straight, glaring at the blonde, the next. He was bent over, holding his gut after the blonde delivered a devastating punch, his eyes widened in disbelief as he wheezed in shock, s such speed, the fallen angel murmured in shock. Like I said, Naruto spoke, Forgive me if I am a bit rough, I don't know my own strength in this form, so I apologize if this fight is short, he said with a small smirk, Naruto didn't allow Kokebeel time to recover as he delivered several punches to the fallen angel's face, each strike holding a great deal of force, the fallen angel helpless as each hit stunned him, Naruto lifted his leg, preparing to kick the fallen angel across the field. Finally having recovered, Kokebeel ducked under Naruto's kick, making the blonde blink in surprise, as a result, the sage was unprepared as Kokebeel buried his fist to the blonde's face, the fallen angel not letting up as he continuously smashed his fists into the blonde's face, catching Kokebeel's fist, Naruto pushed it to the side, Kokebeel spinning as he formed a light spear in his hands, grinning, the fallen was prepared to slice off the blonde's head. He would have succeeded, had Naruto not ducked under the light spear, two kanais appearing in his hands, Naruto struck, the two blades close to sinking into the fallen angel's flesh, they would, had Kokebeel not jumped away, wings flapping, the fallen angel took to the skies, dozens of light spears forming around as he grinned madly. Die. Kokebeel cackled as the spears rained down upon the blonde's stationary form, tensing, Naruto dodged, weaving between two light spears, Naruto threw one of his kanais to the hovering fallen angel, snorting in amusement. Kokebeel tiled his head as the knife sped past him, opening his mouth to taunt the blonde, Kokebeel's words died in his throat when Naruto disappeared from his line of sight. Dumbfounded, the fallen angel couldn't react when he felt a white-hot pain erupt from his back, screaming in agony and pain. The fallen angel looked behind him, shocked to see Naruto behind him, 
burying a spinning blue sphere of energy in his back, falling to the ground. Kokebiel groaned as his wings were severely damaged, taking them out the fight. Paining retracting his wings back into his back, Kokebiel growled at the blonde who landed on the ground, his form relatively unscathed from their skirmish, forming a light spear, Kokebiel threw it towards the blonde. Dodging the spear, Naruto eyes kept track of it as it disappeared over the horizon, turning to meet the fallen angel. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise when he felt the spear explode in the distance, turning back to the direction the spear went. Naruto felt surprise when he saw the explosion that occurred that was at least a few square miles away. Impressive power, but nothing compared to Kagaya, that woman could create and shift dimensions at will after all. Turning back to the fallen angel, he gasped as he felt Kokebiel run through his body with a light spear. Got ya. The fallen angel smirked, smirking as blood ran down his chin. Naruto spoke. No, I got you, he said much to Kokebiel's confusion. Boom, with that, Kokebiel was thrown back with tremendous force as Naruto exploded. W what the fuck? Kokebiel asked in shock, did he just commit suicide? He murmured as he righted himself. In a way it was suicide, a voice beside him spoke. Widening his eyes, Kokebiel turned his head to see the blonde standing beside him, it was a good shadow clone, too bad it had to die. With that said, Naruto struck out, kicking Kokebiel in the head, sending the fallen angel skidding across the ground, sand picking up and departing as the fallen angel made a small trench. Growling, the fallen angel shook sand from his body and glared at the blonde, his eyes widening. Kokebiel felt fear well up as he caught sight of the blonde holding a blue spinning ball, a blue spinning ball that had four large white spinning blades, and it made a screeching sound as the blade spinned, I can't let that hit me. Tensing, the fallen angel dodged when the blonde threw the ball, grinning as it missed, Kokebiel's grin lessened when Naruto clenched his fist, expand, the Naruto said aloud, Kokebiel felt a white hot pain hit his right arm, and he screamed in agony as the ball expanded, and exploded, dozens of tiny blades of wind striking his arm and ripping it to shreds. Panting when it was finally over, Kokebiel grasped his right shoulder, his entire right arm, all the way up to the shoulder being gone, grunting in agony and pain, Kokebiel kept his hand on his wound, panting as he lost blood. Surrender, Naruto spoke, I do not wish to kill you, please, just surrender, Naruto said grimly. Growling in anger, the fallen angel looked at the blonde with an insane gleam in his eyes, never. The war. The war must begin anew. How else? How else am I supposed to gleefully kill devils and angels? Kokebiel shouted in madness. Narrowing his eyes, Naruto briefly shut them as he frowned, I see, you're nothing but a mad, war-hungry dog, he spoke solemnly, forming another Rasen Shuriken in his hands, Naruto frowned briefly, I take no pleasure from this, the blonde threw the Rasen Shuriken towards the fallen angel. Kokebiel snorted, glaring at the spinning sphere heading towards him, war will begin, if not by me, then by someone else, he murmured, as the Rasen Shuriken hit him, Kokebiel felt a sharp white hot pain, before all he knew was darkness. Staring at the spot Kokebiel once occupied, Naruto sighed solemnly, grabbing a feather, Naruto clenched as he pocketed it, focusing on the Hiraishin seal he had placed on Seraphal, the pulled on it, and he soon vanished. When the blonde reappeared, he was instantly glomped by Seraphal, the black-haired beauty tightly holding to his midsection, Naru Tan. I was so worried, she exclaimed, smiling softly, Naruto patted her head, tilting her head as his hand caressed her cheek. There's no need to worry, Kokebiel is no longer a problem, and your little sister is safe. Smiling happily as her eyes shined in tears of relief and joy, Seraphal stood on her toes, Naruto lowering his head as their lips met in a gentle and meaningful kiss, the two ignored Lady Sitri squeal as she snapped a picture, Lord Sitri shaking his head slightly in amusement. Separating, Naruto noted a gleam in Seraphal's eyes, as a magical circle with the Leviathan symbol appeared below them, Naruto swore he saw Seraphal lick her lips as her eyes gleamed with lust and love as they teleported. Appearing once again in a different room, Naruto noted that they were still in C3 Manor, except they were in Seraphal's room specifically, blinking. Naruto was caught off guard as Seraphal pushed him onto the bed, straddling his form as she kissed him for a moment. I think Naru Tan deserves a reward for saving my little sister. The purple eyes Mao purred softly in his ear. I can't wait. I've wanted to do this for so long she seductively whispered in his ear. Once again capturing the blonde's lips in a steaming hot kiss, the blonde returning it, Naruto absently noted the fact that their articles of clothing were slowly disappearing from their bodies, their bare skin melting against one another's as Seraphal's curves melded perfectly with the blonde's frame. Soon, 
The manor became dead silent, the maids, servants, guards, even Lady and Lord Seatree stopped what they were doing as several loud muffled sounds came from the direction of Seraphal's bedroom, the sounds included things such as moans, and screams of pleasure, from those sounds, they were able to hear some muffled words they were able to hear. Those words included, it's feels so good, oh, by the mow, harder, faster, deeper, and the ever so famous I am coming. By the time twenty minutes even passed, all of the servants' faces were redder than a tomato as they all scrambled for earplugs, sighing in relief when they no longer heard the sounds of Seraphal doing the dance with her special someone, Lord and Lady Citri could only cry anime tears as they eagerly began brainstorming on names for their future grandchildren, though, later they were comically crying tears at the fact that the servants were using all the earplugs. They settled for placing paper towels in their ears so they wouldn't hear their daughter doing the tango with their future son-in-law, didn't stop them from sharing notes on names for their future grandchildren though. So that was Bocha's older brother. Issei, a pawn of Rias and the wielder of the Red Dragon Emperor murmured, earlier today, Issei had met the older brother of his king, to say he was surprised was an understatement, the older man looked a lot like Rias. Indeed that was, Sona answered, walking alongside Issei as Rias smiled at her pawn, the black-haired class rep, looked at Issei with a stern look, consider yourself lucky Issei, you caught a small glimpse of Sirzex the first time when you crashed Rias' wedding, today, you met him officially, not many devils have that honor, remember that. So Sona, how's your peerage doing? Rias asked, changing the topic of conversation. They're fine, although Sanji has been quite, eager to prove he's better than Issei, Sona answered, frowning slightly at the overzealous attitude of her pawn. Sanji is certainly, unique? Rias offered, Issei snorted. A closet pervert is more like it, the brown-haired boy stated. And being an open pervert is better? Sona lightly countered. At least I can be open with my desires, is shouted out in pride, making several students within earshot glare at him with venom. Rias merely giggled at her pawn while Sona smirked slightly. The three continued walking through the halls, meeting with Sona's queen, Subaki, and Rias' queen, Akano along the way, smiling. The group continued their trek down the halls, students parting for their while they gave subtle glares to Issei. Sona Tan. A voice shouted out, making everyone freeze as Sona paled slightly in horror, turning. Everyone saw the visage of a smaller girl running towards them, she had black hair like Sona's, but hers was longer and held in two pigtails, purple eyes a shade brighter than Sona's, and unlike Sona, a pair of more generous breasts, and she was dressed in a magical girl outfit, the students all murmured between themselves at who the new arrival was. Sona paled more, while Rias merely giggled, Akano joining her while Tsubaki sighed as Issei looked on in confusion, tackling into Sona, Seraphal clung onto her sister, grinning happily as she hugged her, Sona Tan. Catching her breath, Sona gasped lightly, Oh Onisama, what are you doing here? I wanted to see my little sister, Seraphal happily exclaimed, hearing that, Issei and the rest of the students all gasped in shock, sister. At that moment, Sona saw something surprising from her sister, for a brief moment, Sona saw her sister ignore the other devils around them, and look at the students, human students, bitterly, a small hint of distaste, however just fast as it appeared, it was gone. Blinking, Sona ignored it, shrugging it off as nothing, as for Seraphal, the black-haired beauty had to stop the bitter feeling she was feeling from getting stronger, but she couldn't stop the bitter feelings towards the humans gathered around them, humans that had hurt her Naru Tan, it was foolish she knew, the humans that had hurt her Naru Tan were now gone for over millions of years, that didn't stop the feeling from rising though. Instead she focused her sister, grinning happily at Sona, Looking over the other devils, she smiled happily towards Tsubaki, Akano, and Rias, she tilted her heads lightly when she saw Issei, idly wondering who he was before she remembered Rias had a new pawn, so that's Hyoko Ike, or was it Hyaku Isobu? She idly wondered. Issei suddenly felt the urge to cry anime tears, he didn't know why, so he settled for simply staring at Seraphal, comparing the girl to Sona. Oh Onisama, can you let me go? Sona asked feeling embarrassed as she remained in her sister's arms, blinking, Seraphal let her sister go, Sona sighing in relief, smiling happily, Seraphal bounced on the balls of her feet. Sona Tan, there's someone special I want you to meet, she said happily, blinking, Sona and Rias wondered who Seraphal was speaking about as Akano, Tsubaki, and Issei all tilted their heads curiously. Oh? Who is this someone Onisama? Sona asked curiously, grinning happily. Seraphal looked behind her, cupping her mouth. Naru Tan. You can come in now. Seraphal yelled. The students were all surprised at her loud voice, 
Moments after her yell, the doors at the end of the hall opened, and Naruto's form strolled down the quiet hall. Male students glared at him in venom, murmuring about how another pretty boy was moving in on their turf. Female students all looked at the blonde hunk with hearts in their eyes, drooling slightly. Rias, Sona, their queens, and Issei could only stare in disbelief at the blonde, recognizing him as the one who saved their lives from Kokabiel, continuing his casual stride. Naruto stopped beside Seraphal, smiling at the two kings, smiling happily. Seraphal clung onto the blonde. Sona Tan meet Naru Tan, Naru Tan meet Sona Tan, she said happily. Nice to officially meet you, Sona, Naruto spoke, his voice carrying a roguish charm. Nice to meet you, Ta, Sona said politely, a hint of wariness in her eyes. Rias frowned slightly alongside Sona, not trusting the man, but if he was in the company of Seraphal, then he should at least be trustworthy. Oni sama, who exactly is he? Sona asked, beaming happily. Seraphal gained a twinkle in her eyes as Naruto spoke, My full name is Naruto Uzumaki, Sona, as to who I am exactly, the blonde trailed off. Smiling widely, Seraphal took over, placing a hand on Naruto's cheek, much to everyone's surprise, Seraphal further shocked them when she leaned her head up, the blonde meeting her halfway as they shared a small kiss, separating after a few moments, Naruto and Seraphal looked at the shocked faces of Sona, Rias, and their respective peerage members, the human students all having shocked looks as well. Naru Tan is going to be your brother in law, Sona Tan. Seraphal exclaimed happily, dropping the bomb. It was silent for several long moments, the sentence taking a while to register. When it finally did, there was only one response Naru Tan is going to be your brother in law, Satan. Those words, that sentence, fried the brain of Sona Citri. Outside, she had a blank expression on her face as everyone else announced their shock quite vocally. Inwardly, however, was another story. The gears in her head were moving at a never before seen pace, her brain trying and failing to comprehend the situation. Naru Tan is going to be your brother in law, Satan, does not compute. Does not compute, danger, your brain is in danger to being fried. Suggested action shut down your brain for the cooling process. Do you wish to proceed? Confirmed, cooling process beginning momentarily. Shutting down all brain functions, shut down beginning in 3, 2, 1. Shut down commencing, reboot in progress, please wait. Reboot complete, replaying last known message, Naru Tan is going to be your brother in law Satan. Computing, computing. Error. Error. Cannot properly compute. Deleting all minor information to properly compute, deleting. Names of new students who had recently joined the school being deleted along with data containing paperwork that had been previously signed for the principal. Delete process complete. Computing last known message. Message properly computed. Now activating proper response protocols. Back in the outside world, Seraphal still clung to Naruto's arm as she grinned happily in amusement at the other's response. Mostly everyone resembled a fish out of water due to her quite literally dropping the bomb. The black-haired Mao nearly busted a gut when she saw Rios' expression. The Gremory's facial expression showed her shock. The redhead's eyes were wide, almost resembling sparkly white plates, her pupils looking like small little dots, her mouth was hanging from her jaw, Seraphal was certain that it hanged off any lower, her jaw might have fallen off, Akano had a similar expression, the only difference being that her smile seemed frozen on her face. Rias Pan Isan, or was it Ikan? Seemed as if he was being repeatedly shocked with lightning magic, his eyes wide as they can go as his jaw literally hit the ground. Subaki, her dear sister's queen, looked like a fish out of water, and Seraphal nearly laughed when a bit of drool seeped from her lips, however, Seraphal was more curious over Sona's reaction, her little sister had yet to have a change in expression, instead having a blank expression. She tilted her head slightly, wondering if she broke her sister in the process thud. Oh wait, her little sister just fainted, thud. Oh, it looks like Rias joined her as well. Seraphal looked at the unconscious form of her sister and Rias for a moment, before she looked at Naruto. Naruto had mirth dancing in his eyes, and Seraphal knew that he was trying very hard to not burst out laughing. The blonde looked at her, one look into each other's eyes and that was all it took for the dam to burst. Throwing their heads back, the duo laughed uncontrollably, Naruto fell on his back, laughing loudly as tears of mirth formed in his eyes, moments later, Seraphal fell on the blonde's chest, laughing as she held her sides, her pink hat slipping off as she let her staff lay on the floor. After several moments of the two laughing, they finally calmed down, too soon. Seraphal asked with a small grin, catching her breath. Much too soon, we should have eased them into it, Naruto replied, chuckling mirthfully, 
He and Seraphal shared a joyful and childish chuckle before they shared a small kiss, with a small grin. Naruto stood, hoisting Seraphal up as he did so. The black haired beauty yelped as she wrapped her legs around his waist to balance herself, before Naruto set her on her feet. Seraphal gave him a loving kiss. We need to find a private room in the school, she whispered naughtily in his ear once they separated lips, giving him a suggestive wink. Naruto gained a slight flush to his cheek, but chuckled. So daring, he whispered huskily, licking her lips before he set her on her feet, with her petite frame. Seraphal had to look up at the blonde, and she pouted cutely as he got the last tease, she crossed her arms over her breasts, unintentionally making appear larger as her purple eyes sparkled as she pouted, Naruto chuckled, taking her pink hat off the ground. He dusted it off and placed it on her head, you are so adorable when you pout like that Sarah Chan, he told her, he gave her a loving kiss as he placed her staff back in her hands, Seraphal smiled happily, bouncing on the balls of her feet joyfully as she hummed a childish tune, the human students, females, recovered from their shock a little a while ago, and they all squealed at the affectionate and loving display. Once again, as Seraphal heard the murmurs and awe-filled whispers of the humans, she felt a burst of irritation and distaste, the bitter feeling at humans igniting in her heart once more, she subdued the feeling once more, telling herself that hating the current generation of humans would solve nothing, but, she didn't think she would ever be able to protect humans as eagerly as she did in the past. Thankfully, her thought process was interrupted when Naruto spoke, well Sarah Chan, I don't think we can leave Rias Chan and Sona Chan here in the hallway. What do you say we take them the council room until they wake up? That way we can answer their questions in a private setting, Naruto said. Nodding, Seraphal grinned happily. Akano Chan, Subaki Chan, Isan Chan, carry Rias Chan and So Tan to the council room for us, she ordered. Akano and Subaki, still in shock, complied with her orders without question, Issei, however. My name is Issei, he exclaimed. Seraphal ignored them, instead taking Naruto by the arm. Naru Tan come on. I'll give you a small tour of the school. She joyfully exclaimed, and maybe find a nice empty room, she murmured to herself, chuckling. Naruto allowed himself to be dragged along, ignoring Issei as he cried anime tears. For a good while Seraphal eagerly dragged along Naruto, giving him a tour of Kuo, eagerly pointing out things to him, the various classes and the many lessons each class gave. Naruto listened with rapt attention interest dancing in his eyes, back in his time, the only thing they taught in the academy was basic to advanced math, history, writing, and the shinobi arts. Naruto found it all so interesting that there were now classes for cooking, drawing, technology, and many other things he couldn't name, it made him smile, knowing that the children of the next generation were being taught so many useful skills, currently, the couple were walking down an empty hall, Seraphal smiling joyfully as she clung to his arm. Naruto smiled down at her, before he was startled as she suddenly dragged him into the nurse's room, which was currently empty as the nurse was out for the day, the blonde was confused as Seraphal set him down on one of the beds in the nurse's room. Wait here, Seraphal told him, giggling at his confusion, she disappeared into the closet of room and Naruto decided to entertain himself by examining the room, in all honesty, the room reminded the blonde of any other regular hospital room, the only difference being that it had a much more comfortable atmosphere and the walls were light blue rather than white. Hearing the closet door open, Naruto looked and his eyes widened, leaning against the door's frame was Seraphal, who was wearing a nurse's outfit that looked several sizes smaller on her, despite the fact she was wearing clothes that were obviously not her size, she still looked absolutely stunning, stunning and delectable. With desire in her eyes, Seraphal took sensual steps towards the stationary blonde. Who could only stare at her, reaching the bed, Seraphal sensually crawled onto Naruto's lap, her purple eyes sparked brightly with desire, love and lust, Naru Tan looks sick, she whispered, licking her lips as she stared into the blonde's eyes, good thing that magical nurse Livia Tan is here to take care of you, she said suggestively, she gently blew her breath onto Naruto's neck, wrapping her legs around his waist and her arms around his neck. Smiling, Naruto played along, I'll be in your care. Livia Chan, he murmured, gently placing his lips on her neck, feeling her cheeks grow hot, Seraphal allowed Naruto to kiss her neck, moments later, she used her hand to lift Naruto's face towards her, they shared a soft kiss at first before it gradually became more heated, feeling Naruto's tongue brush against her lips, Seraphal opened her mouth, it wasn't long before their tongues began to play, the tender muscles wrapping around each other and exploring the other's mouth. Moaning, Seraphal began to remove Naruto's shirt, their lips separating temporarily before they were joined again. She idly noticed Naruto place a hand on the floor, and a ceiling matrix enveloping the room, 
she was able to make out the kanji for silence and she smiled into the kiss joyfully, gently pushing his body so that he was laying on the bed, Seraphal smiled at the blonde lovingly as she once again connected their mouths, Naruto removed her nurse's shirt, and moments later, their pants and skirts respectively joined the small pile of clothes on the floor. It was very fortunate Naruto placed a seal that made the room soundproof, otherwise many lessons would have been interrupted that day. Sona's Sitri released a groan as she regained consciousness, her mind immediately began to think of reasons as to why she was unconscious, dozens of thoughts entering and leaving her head within nanoseconds, eventually, she found the memory of what led her to be in an unconscious state, and her eyes snapped open as she sat up in an instant. Well, looks like you're finally awake, a male voice said to her left, amusement heavy in his tone. Satan is up. Yay. Slowly turning her head, Sona froze as her purple eyes caught the scene in front of her, sitting in a chair was the same blonde, Naruto Uzumaki as she recalled, Seraphal, a Mao and her sister, was settled on Naruto's lap, her arms wrapped around the blonde's neck, Seraphal bounced on Naruto's lap a few times before she jumped off, landing on her feet and enveloping her sister in a hug, Satan is awake, she shouted cheerfully. Sona felt the air in her lungs being crushed out of her, Onisama, I, need, air. Sona wheezed, chuckling. Naruto placed a hand on Seraphal's head, getting the black-haired beauty's attention. Sarah chan I am pretty sure your sister needs air to live, he told her, laughing sheepishly. Seraphal let go of her sister, Sona gasping as her lungs took in greedy gulps of air. Once she regained herself, Sona looked at the smiling duo, before she sighed. Can I get an explanation please? But before that, care to tell me why the council room is empty? she said, rubbing her temples? Certainly, Naruto chuckled, Seraphal taking her place back on his lap, she snuggled into his warmth, sighing contently as she rubbed theirs cheeks together, watching their interaction, Sona felt uncomfortable, for starters, Rias woke up 30 minutes before you, she didn't really say anything, just left the room with a blank expression, murmuring that she was dreaming all the while, the blonde began. Sona nodded slightly, not surprised at Rias' actions, to be honest, she thought she was dreaming too. As to why the room is empty. Well, your peerage was causing quite the scene when me and Sarah Chan came in unannounced. Eventually, Seraphal whacked. What was his name again? Ah, Sanji on the head with her staff for being rude to her. After that, your peerage was pretty much ready to come to blows with us. Thus, Naruto trailed off, looking behind Sona. Sona turned, and blinked owlishly as she bore witness to the sight of her peerage all laying on the floor, their mouths open as they drooled slightly, with her eyesight. Sona was able to spot seals made from ink embedded into the necks of her peerage, and she recognized the kanji for sleep written within the seals. I had to put them to sleep, Naruto finished, paying Seraphal no mind as she ran her fingers through his hair. Sona sighed as she turned back to the blonde, rubbing her temples again, just finish your explanation as to how, and why you are in a relationship with me sister, she murmured tiredly. Naruto shrugged slightly, fair enough, me and Seraphal met shortly after the Great War ended, from there. Naruto and Seraphal told Sona of their first meeting, how Seraphal accidentally found the barrier he had erected in the center of a clearing, how somehow she was able to bypass the barrier, something Naruto was still trying to figure out. How Seraphal first found him asleep under a sakura tree, and how he awoke to find her sitting in front of him, humming a cheerful tone, they explained to Sona how wary Naruto was of her at first, but then they told her of how quickly Naruto warmed up to her after spending a few minutes with her. The first day they spent together, and the amount of fun they had talking together, and sometimes the occasional spar, they told her of how at first, they were very close friends for a good long while for nearly three centuries, after the first century, Seraphal's feelings for Naruto began to change into something more, Seraphal told Sona that she didn't act on those feelings yet at the time because she was so busy as she had only recently gotten the position of a Mao. She told her sister that after she had finally her position settled, she was actually contemplating on revealing her feelings to Naruto, but couldn't as once again, she was needed as it was one of her responsibilities to keep the fragile peace between the three fractions from the devil's side, she told her again that she felt she was ready to reveal her feelings, but then she was born, and she had to focus on being the best elder sister she could be. Finally, she told Sona that nearly a month ago she finally revealed her feelings, and she couldn't be any happier, likewise, Naruto told his side, telling Sona that Seraphal was a very fun person to be with, and she had very quickly became one of his best friends, he explained that after spending so much time together with her, he fell in love with her, but he never acted on those feelings, believing that Seraphal had enough stress as it was. Finally, they wrapped up their story with how they got together. Looking at the happy couple, 
Sona had a blank look on her face, however, Seraphal and Naruto were able to see the quirk of Sona's lips as she gave a small smile. I see, I am happy for you Onisama, and, oh, Onisama, Sona said, blushing in embarrassment, squealing, Seraphal lunged at her sister, enveloping her into a tight hug as her body brimmed joyfully with unrestrained happiness, Sona sighed, but didn't resist her sister, instead, she slowly rose her arms, and blushed in embarrassment as she briefly returned her sister's hug. Releasing the hug, Seraphal beamed, and Sona coughed in an attempt to save face, she failed as Naruto placed a hand on her head, ruffling her hair slightly, well, you know about me, now how about I learn more about you Imouto? Naruto warmly said as Seraphal gave him a soft kiss to his cheek, beaming happily as gestured for Sona to comply. That day, Sona learned what it was like to have a big brother. And she had to say, she didn't see why Rias complained about her brother a lot. The room was relatively peaceful as the occupants all awaited the final few members of their meeting, to the right of the large table, set in the middle of room, were two blondes, female and male respectively, both had blue eyes, and they both had a peaceful aura about them. Seated in the middle of the table was a rather handsome man, he had neck-length black hair with yellow highlights, his red eyes twinkling slightly as he gave a lazy grin, seated next to him was a young man wearing an all-black outfit, the young man had silverish gray hair, gray eyes with a blue tint twinkling slightly, he wore a nonchalant smile, but there was something dangerous in that smile. To the left of the table, four other figures were seated, one had shoulder-length crimson red hair, and turquoise-colored eyes, behind him stood a woman in a maid's uniform, she had silver hair, with matching silver eyes, seated next to the red-haired man was another male, this had shoulder-length black hair, blue eyes that surveyed everyone in the room with caution, he had his arms folded, and he was lightly tapping his elbow. The final occupant was another male, this had dark brown hair, almost black, reaching his neckline, his hair was messy if a bit untamed, his forest green were what stood out the most, his hand holding up his head as he light tapped on the table with his other hand. Moments later, the door leading out of the room opened, and in entered Rias Gremory, along with her peerage, followed by that, Sona entered, her peerage following behind her, we're not late are we? Rias asked worriedly. The red-haired man, who had a striking resemblance to Rias when the two were together, spoke, no, you're not late little sister, just take a seat anywhere you see. Thank, Nisama, she said with smile, her older brother, Sirzex, smiled happily at his younger sister. Watching as Sona and Rias, along with their peerages, took their seats, Ajuka spoke, looks like almost everyone is here, all we need now is Seraphal, he looked at the empty chair next to Sirzex, and then the other empty chair next to that one, I still don't understand why she requested another chair, especially on the condition that that chair is placed next to hers, he murmured in confusion. Sirzex hummed thoughtfully, maybe she wanted someplace to rest her legs, he offered. Perhaps she is bringing a guest? Grafia inquired. Knowing her, she probably is bringing someone along, Falbium uttered casually. Azazel chuckled, the sound echoing across the room, makes you wonder who she is bringing don't it? He stated with a grin, I must admit I am rather curious. I also wonder what my rival is up to, the blonde woman, Gabriel, murmured to herself, her brother, the archangel and current leader of heaven, Michael, hummed slightly. To be honest, I stopped questioning Seraphal's motives long ago, she's just so, confusing to me, he admitted sheepishly, Ajuka snorted. You and me both, I stopped trying to understand her a long time ago, I haven't had a headache since, Falbium nodded in agreement of Ajuka's assessment. Azazel laughed while the others chuckled briefly. Seraphal Sama is still late, and that is unacceptable, Grafia interrupted sternly, I wonder where she could be, the silver-haired maid murmured, Rias made to speak, but the red-haired Gremory couldn't as Sona placed a firm hand on her shoulder. Looking into each other's eyes, a silent conversation was spoken between the two. Don't say a word Rias. Why not? My sister asked me to keep the subject of her and Naruto silent until she arrives. Really? Why? She wants it to be a surprise, besides, can you imagine the leaders of the three fractions having such dumbfounded expressions? There was a twinkle in Sona's eyes, a mischievous twinkle, and that made Rias blink in surprise, she thought about it, and realized that she would pay to see the shocked expressions everyone's face, a twinkle very much like Sona's appeared in Rias' eyes, and the red-haired girl smirked as she leaned back in her chair. Falbium noticed their exchange, and he raised an eyebrow in curiosity. The leaders of their respective fractions continued making small talk, speaking of mundane things until Seraphal's arrival, after several more minutes of waiting, their small talk was halted as they heard two voices outside the room that were steadily getting closer. 
I still can't believe this is considered formal wear, I would have preferred a formal kimono besides this restricting thing, an undoubtedly male voice said. Another voice responded, one that the others recognized as Seraphal, but I think you look great in a tux. I am not saying that it doesn't look good, the male responded, just saying that it's restricting, I feel like I am walking as stiff as a board. It's just for today Naru Tan, please bear with it, Seraphal asked. All right. I just hope I don't have to wear something like this again in the future. Yay. Naru Tan is always so compromising, Seraphal cheered. The male chuckled, is this the door Sarah Chan? Yep. Yep. I hope we're not late, with that, the door opened, and everyone's eyes honed in on the room's two new occupants, Seraphal was wearing a suit and tie, and she still looked as beautiful as ever even in formal clothing. The other person was someone that only a few in the room were familiar with, his spiky golden hair reminded a few of them of the Fenex clan, but they could tell he wasn't from the Fenex, his sapphire blue eyes sparkled with curiosity and warmth, the most curious was the three whisker marks on his cheeks, he wore a black tuxedo with an orange bow tie, he seemed a little uncomfortable, as evidenced by the fact that he was tugging the collar of his tux. His arrival caused Rios Peerage to tense slightly, Kaneko being most affected as she looked at the blonde with caution and a hint of awe, the senjutsu she felt from him relaxing her even if she didn't want to be relaxed, Sona's peerage was unaffected, as the situation was explained to them by Sona when they regained consciousness. Sorry we're late everyone. Seraphal exclaimed cheerfully, grinning slightly. Seraphal, Ajuka greeted, glad to see you made it, if I may ask, who is the man with you? He asked. Naruto stepped forward, bowing slightly as he spoke, greetings, it's an honor to meet the esteemed leaders of the three fractions, I am Naruto Uzumaki. Naru Tan is my queen. Seraphal stated bluntly when Naruto finished his introduction. Everyone blinked. What? Sirzex asked in surprise, expressing everyone's surprise, even Azazel was surprised, the black haired fallen angel blinking as he processed the information. The entire room fell silent when Seraphal and Naruto shared a brief kiss, everyone slowly widened until they resembled nothing but plates. He's also my fiance. Seraphal continued joyfully, once again dropping the bomb at an unprepared audience. The silence lasted for a full five seconds until it was broken by the sound of two soft thuds, those two thuds were the sound of Gabriel and Grafia fainting from shock. Eyes wide, Ajuka opened and closed his mouth, for the first time in his life, he was truly speechless and he couldn't form a coherent thought, Sirzex held a blank look on his face, as if he had just heard his little sister grew up and already had a child, he was numb all over, and he slowly slid out of his chair until he soon joined his wife on the ground. Falbium's eyes were wide his mouth hanging open as the sentence tried to remail itself into his head, once it did, the only response he could come up with was random and incoherent gibberish. Azazel blinked rapidly, before he gave a somewhat shaky grin as he leaned back, trying to regain his composure, he wasn't doing a very good job of it, Valley merely blinked, but you can clearly see the shock in his eyes, finally, Michael, let's just say he looked as if he just discovered one of his priests was a closet pervert. Seraphal and Naruto burst out laughing, holding each other as they laughed, Rias could only giggle, and the rest of her peerage could only stand in shock, with the exception of Akano and Issei who already knew. Sona kept a straight face as her peerage laughed, but her shaking shoulders and the slight quirk of her lips gave her away. Nearly, 30 minutes passed until everyone finally recovered, Seraphal and Naruto content to sit next to each other, Seraphal having her hand on top of Naruto's as they held them under the table, the first to speak was Ajuka. Seraphal. This man is your fiancé and queen? Ajuka asked, still trying to wrap his head around it, Seraphal eagerly nodded. If you made him your queen, then that means you finally used the evil piece set that I gave you, he stated, again Seraphal nodded. What's so special about the evil set you gave her? Azazel asked. Sighing, Ajuka mentally debated in his head, before he ultimately decided to explain, as you all know, evil pieces all have a certain limit based on the value beings have, if the value is high, the more pieces are used, if a being proves to be too strong, then it is impossible for the evil piece to reincarnate them, even if that piece is a mutated piece, he told them. The others nodded, already having known that, however, the original evil piece sets I created, the first four I distributed to Sirzex, myself, Falbium and Seraphal, have no limits, everyone's eyes, besides the four Mao, and Naruto, widened in shock. W why do they have no limits? Michael asked, when we needed to increase the devil population. And I said about creating the evil peace system, I didn't really have limits in mind when I designed them. 
When I distributed the first four sets Falbium was the one to point out the floor of distributing pieces with no limits to other devils, devils, are naturally selfish beings, also greedy, and arrogant as well, it was Falbium's concern that devils would seek beings far stronger than they were, and attempt to foolishly force them into their peerages, such actions would immediately get them killed, thus, lowering the population of devils even more, Ajuka explained. It was another few weeks later did I correct the system, and pieces with certain limits were placed, the fact that only four evil piece sets with no limits existed was kept a tightly guarded secret between the Mao, Ajuka finished. I see, Michael murmured, Gabriel shivering slightly as she imagined less than savory devils gaining their hands on all powerful beings. Azazel whistled in amazement, damn, you devils are full of surprises aren't you? Beside him, Valley smirked. Falbium shrugged, before he noticed Sirzex intently staring at Naruto, something wrong Sirzex? He asked with a raised eyebrow. Everyone's attention turned to Sirzex, and Naruto raised a brow as he saw Sirzex staring at him. Sirzex waved Falbium off, it's nothing really, it's just, I never took Sarah to be the type to rob the cradle, he commented with amusement. Azazel grinned, seeing where Sirzex was going with this, yeah, she's like what? A little over 300 or so years old. That's definitely robbing the cradle, he said with a teasing grin. Everyone seemed to find some amusement in that sentence, but they all blinked in confusion when instead of Seraphal pouting, or Naruto flushing, the couple laughed instead, the sudden burst of their laughter made everyone blink and frown in confusion. When both Naruto and Seraphal finished laughing, Sirzex was the one that asked the question, what's funny? He asked. Sorry, but, what you just claimed is pretty funny, Naruto chuckled. If anyone is the cradle robber in this relationship it's Naru Tan, Seraphal said. How can he be the cradle robber in this situation? Ajuka asked with a raised eyebrow. I am over millions of years old, I was alive before angels, devils and fallen angels came to be, Naruto answered with a smile. The room was dead silent, the younger devils trying to come to terms that someone could live that long, the older generation stared, their brains registering the fact that this man lived before their species time. I can definitely see how he's the cradle robber, Azazel murmured with a smirk. If you truly have been alive for so long, the stories you must have, you're practically a walking artifact, Falbium uttered, Ajuka's eyes twinkling slightly at the thought learning about a time before the three factions existed. Truly amazing, Sirzex and Michael murmured, is it possible to even live that long? Gabriel wondered in awe, others sharing her thought. What Naru Tan says is true, Seraphal confirmed, clinging onto the blonde. As much as I would love to swap stories with all of you, Naruto said amused, I believe you have a rather important meeting to hold, he hinted. That made everyone sheepishly chuckled, he has a point, as the leader of the angels, I am ready to begin, Michael spoke. I, as well, am ready to begin, Azazel easily followed up. And we, the four Mao of the underworld, are ready to begin, Sirzex followed, the rest of the Mao nodding in agreement. Naruto leaned back in his chair, content with watching the meeting progress, he never really enjoyed politics that much, true, he desired to become Hokage when he was younger, however. During the centuries he spent guarding over Kagaya as she slept in the seal he could only really do two things, train, and think, and that was what he did during those several million years. He simply trained and thought, he trained until his body fell to exhaustion, and he thought until he fell to mental exhaustion, he created new techniques, and mastered them in time, he thought over all his faults, his past, present and sometimes future, after his first century of watching over Kagaya, he thought over his desire to become Hokage and he eventually decided that the politics that would come with the job would be something he disliked immensely. He was always the head-on type of guy, preferring to either talk sense into people, or beat sense into them, or both talk and beat sense into them, that was how he always went about things, and it worked out for him, he couldn't come up with complex plans like Shikamaru that would leave him 10 to 15 steps ahead of you, he much preferred to come up with plans on the fly, making it up as he went along. While being Hokage was about being the strongest shinobi in the village, it was also about politics, and during his time as a genin, he saw the problems that most politics caused, Dodo being a prime example, so being Hokage was something he decided, while attainable, was something he wouldn't want to deal with, thinking about it now, Naruto wondered, how did everything go after the mess with Kagaya was over? He decided not to think about, it was all in the past now, and he can only look forward to the future, he looked at Seraphal, who was taking part in the conversation between the faction leaders, he smiled slightly at the beautiful girl, as long as Seraphal was with him, then he supposed that the future would be bright no matter what. She was the one who found him, 
saved him from his loneliness, her bright and carefree personality always uplifting his mood, it was virtually impossible to not be happy with Seraphal around him. He observed the others in the room, he examined the leaders of the three factions, and he saw something that made him smile, true, they were all warriors who have had a hand in taking lives, and partaking in war, but, the thing that made him smile was the look in their eyes, the look of determination, determination for peace. It was well hidden, and it took a moment for him to see it. But the desire was there, the desire for peace was strong in their eyes, it was in that moment, Naruto knew, that no matter what happened in this meeting, peace would bear fruit, it made Naruto happy, however, the one next to Azazel, Valley, he concerned Naruto, the blonde could tell that the silver-haired boy loved fighting, of that Naruto was absolutely sure, so Naruto was a bit concerned, would his love of fighting prevent him from wanting peace? Only time would tell. He looked at the younger occupants in the room, Rias and her peerage paying full attention to the meeting, though, Issei had a bit of a confused look in his eyes, it made Naruto chuckle quietly. Hearing his chuckle, Seraphal turned her attention to him, a thin eyebrow raised in curiosity, Naruto flashed her a smile, squeezing her hand, silently conveying that everything was alright, the black-haired girl gave him a bright and loving smile before she returned her focus to the meeting, her face changing into a concentrated and serious expression. With Seraphal returning her attention to the meeting, Naruto looked at Sona and her peerage, like Rias, Sona's full attention was situated on the meeting taking place, her ears taking in every single word spoken, her eyes taking in every single detail, Naruto smiled, it seemed Shikamaru's excellent mind was inherited by the young Sitri, her peerage were paying close attention to the meeting as well, though a few did shift uncomfortably. Why don't we ask the younger generation what they think, Naruto heard Sirzex propose, blinking, Naruto paid closer attention, it seems that Sirzex wanted the opinion of the younger ones watching the meeting, as Naruto heard all of them give their answers, Naruto smiled, although when they got to Issei, Naruto rose an eyebrow. Well, I, uh, don't really know, I mean, uh, I am sorry I can't really understand, he sheepishly chuckled. Think of it like this Issei-kun, Azazel began with an amused smirk, if there's war, you can't have sex with Rias and have kids, if there's peace, you can have sex all you want, he explained in a rather, unique way. Rias' eyes were widened comically, and she had a full-blown blush on her face, the others around chuckling at her misfortune. Peace. I want peace. That way I can have sex with Baochao, Issei hurriedly exclaimed. Naruto blinked, and he looked up at the ceiling, Aero sensei your legacy lives on, which is disturbing, he thought, silently sending his prayers to Jiraiya, he idly wondered if Issei was going to writing books and call them the series, Icha Icha. What about you Valley? Azazel asked, Naruto paid closer attention to this. Valley shrugged, I don't really care either way, as long as I have strong people to fight, I am fine, he answered, Naruto narrowed his eyes, that response was much too vague to be an answer. What about you Naruto-san? What's your opinion? Azazel asked, the others turned towards the blonde, awaiting his response, of course, Seraphal already knew his response, and she smiled at him. A rather useless question Azazel-san, I have and will always desire peace, Naruto answered with a smile. So it's decided then, Sirzex spoke, peace between our factions shall exist, and let us hope that it lasts for centuries to come, he said with a smile. Amen to that, Azazel agreed, before the celebrations could take place, it seemed as if time froze, and everyone was frozen in place. W what's going on? Issei wondered in panic, could it be that Gaspar's sacred gear activated? Rias wondered, concern and surprise in her tone. How interesting, Naruto murmured, staying in his seat. How are we not affected? Rias wondered in shock, I am not sure why either, can you explain Gaspar's sacred gear to me? It stops everything in his field of vision, but he can't control and it happens at random, Rias hurriedly explained. Hum, perhaps Gaspar did not want us to be affected by his scared gear, Naruto theorized, I also sense over dozens of presences getting steadily closer here, Naruto added. How could they have converged so close to us without us knowing? Rias wondered. I've sensed them gathering quite a while ago, Naruto said, snapping his fingers in front of an unresponsive Azazel. Why didn't you say something before? Rias demanded. I was curious as to what they doing, if I had known what they were planning this, I would have confronted them. Why are you not worried? Issei snapped, because the situation can easily be remedied, Naruto answered. How? Rias asked in confusion, it happened in an instant, one moment, Naruto was sitting in his chair calmly, 
The next, Issei and Rias yelped as a sudden burst of wind blew through the room, the doors blasting open and closing. W what? Rias murmured in shock, the blonde no longer in the room. The sudden burst of wind was back, and with its arrival, Naruto appeared again, the blonde carefully setting down a shocked and somewhat frightened Gasper. Rias looked at Naruto with shock and disbelief. J just how fast are you? She asked numbly, Issei agreeing with her as he gaped. We have more pressing concerns, Naruto asserted. Hello Gasper, I am Naruto. Do you think you can reverse the effects of your sacred gear? He asked kindly. Why yes, Gasper stuttered, anxious, the small blonde's eyes flashed, and everyone blinked. What just happened? And why is Gasper here? Sirzex asked in confusion, the others shared their confusion. There's no time to explain. We're under attack, Rias grimly announced. Everyone tensed. Really by who? Michael asked, and why? Who would want to interfere with our peace conference? He questioned. Those who do not wish for peace to exist, Naruto stated, mouth pressed into a thin line. It appears the majority of the ones who are surrounding us are humans. There are quite a few devils, angels, and fallen as well. They are numbering in the hundreds now. Their numbers have increased, he murmured. Seraphal felt a sting of hatred, her mind automatically comparing them to the humans who mistreated her lover eons ago. Now humans were trying to prevent peace between between the three factions. Didn't they see that it worked for them as they wouldn't be in danger anymore? For the first time, Seraphal wondered why God loved humans, was it because they were his subjects? Was it because he was so loving? She didn't know, but this confirmed something for her. This confirmed that the humans of today were no better than the ones who hurt her Naru Tan. What's the plan? Sona asked, we should Ajuka began, but he was cut off as Naruto placed a hand on his shoulder. Ill deal with them, Naruto announced, moving towards the window, and gazing upon the few hundred magicians, and stray exorcists gathered around, there were a few devils as well, along with angels and fallen, their eyes showing nothing but contempt and hatred. Are you crazy? Issei asked in shock, he was the only one as everyone else was curious as to what Naruto was capable of while Seraphal had full confidence in Naruto, though she did worry. Folding his arms, Naruto looked at Issei with a neutral expression, I am positive that I am more than enough for them, to be honest it's a bit unfair, for them anyway. Is it confidence, or arrogance from which you speak? Grafia asked neutrally. It is neither, Naruto answered, he placed his hands on the floor, and everyone blinked as they found themselves on the roof of the building no longer in the room they were in, it's fact, Naruto stated, with that said, Naruto jumped off the roof as everyone silently observed his actions. When Naruto landed roughly on the ground, it startled many of the many exorcists and magicians all around as smoke obscured his form ominously, when the smoke cleared, Naruto was standing straight, his lips drawn into a scowl as he glared neutrally at the gathered enemies in front of him, his once warm sapphire blue eyes were cold, shining like glaciers as he folded his arms. It'll give you all a single chance, turn around and leave, he told them neutrally. Don't look down on us abomination. An exorcist retorted loudly with a sneer, we will destroy all you devils, and the rest of the devil lovers. The others around seemed to agree, as they all sneered in Naruto's direction. I tried, Naruto spoke softly, eyes shadowed by his bangs, perhaps this is why Madara lost faith in peace so long ago, he murmured. Let's kill this abomination, and all the other devil lovers in this town. The same exorcists exclaimed, the others shouted their agreement. What makes you think, that any of you, are going to live past today? As Naruto spoke this, the magicians and rouge exorcists were alarmed to see the blonde within their vicinity. The battle began when one exorcist tried to slash at the blonde with his sword, his life was ended as Naruto promptly dodged, relieving the exorcist of his blade, and stabbing the man with his own weapon. That was all it took, dozens of exorcists who carried bladed weapons charged, their battle cry crying out their bloodlust, and desire to avenge their comrade, with a scowl, Naruto leapt into action, he dodged, weaved, and avoided all of their swipes, and slashes, each one not coming close to even hitting him, when Naruto dodged, he countered by giving the attacker a punch, and kick to their faces or torsos. His strikes were so powerful, that when he hit them in the face, some of their necks were broken instantly, the sickening cracks echoing slightly, dodging another sword strike, Naruto grabbed the offending exorcists' arms and snapped them like a pair of chopsticks, the exorcists screamed in pain, but was silenced when Naruto beheaded the man with his own weapon. Now having a weapon in his hands, Naruto used well by blocking and deflecting most strikes that came upon him, he slashed one in the back, severing the spine and making the man writhe in agony, he stabbed another, a woman, in the heart, killing her instantly as he pulled the blade out, 
and deflected another blade form piercing his back. The offender, caught off guard, could not react when Naruto took him by the neck and broke it. Using his blade, Naruto blocked another exorcist's blade from ripping across his back. The blonde's blade shattered upon impact. Quickly, Naruto caught the shattered blade and drove it into the mon's neck. The exorcist choking on his own blade as he fell to the ground, not needing the handle any longer. Naruto threw it, and the handle flew flew at neck-breaking speeds. The handle buried itself into the head of exorcists who was preparing to fire his sniper rifle. The rifle fired, and the bullet sped through several magicians and exorcists, the bullet speeding through their hearts. The bullet struck against exorcist who was carrying around C4. Therefore, when the bullet struck, it hit the explosives he was carrying. The resulting explosion killed several dozen mages and exorcists via shrapnel and blast radius. Grenade. One exorcist yelled, throwing a grenade towards the blonde. Naruto caught the grenade, he quickly looked at it, then promptly shoved it into the mouth of an exorcist's closest to him, he quickly followed by kicking the exorcist away into another group of mages and exorcist, when the grenade exploded, several exorcists and magicians died, their dying screams silencing, Naruto leapt through the smoke, diving straight into a large group. He kicked one man in the face, and used the mons weapons to kill him, and three others who were to close. We have him. One woman yelled in a frenzy, take him, with a battle cry, the closet surrounding exorcists and battle magicians charged, their pointed weapons wanting a taste of Naruto's blood. Wind style. Vacuum blast, Naruto murmured, in an instant, a large ripple of wind surrounded the blonde, and pushed outwards, sending the charging enemies flying away. The other magicians and exorcists warily kept their distance now, uncertainty and fear now filling their minds, Naruto merely stood in the center, content with allowing them to gather their courage. He didn't like fighting others when they were too afraid, even if they were enemies, so he was okay with waiting for them to regain their courage. Back on the roof, everyone could only stare in shock, amazement, and a hint of fear. How can anyone, be so strong? Issei murmured, eyes transfixed. Incredible, Rias uttered, I can see how he defeated Kokabiel, Sona murmured in shock. Amazing, Michael uttered, no other words coming to him, beside him, Gabriel nodded in agreement. Such skill, and power, Azazel spoke, I am glad he's on our side, he added, beside him, Sirzex and Ajuka nodded in agreement. Valley kept his eyes firmly on the blonde, a small smirk of excitement on his lips, he's so strong, he murmured to himself, I definitely want to fight you, Naruto-san. Hey, where is Seraphal? Falbium asked, when that question was asked, everyone murmured in confusion as they looked for the childish Mao. There. Sona pointed out, her shout caught everyone's attention, and they looked upon the scene. Down below, Naruto remained in his position as several magicians conjured up several powerful fireballs, fire. The magicians released their fireballs, and the fiery balls of flame sped towards. Naruto remained unconcerned, even as a wall of ice materialized around him, and protected him from the flames. Once the flames were doused, he sighed tiredly, you didn't have to step in you know. He said, Seraphal smiling brightly at him as she stood beside him, twirling her magical girl wand. What kind of queen and wife would I be if I let you do all the work? She asked with a wink. Fair enough. Naruto shrugged, around them, the remaining magicians and exorcists became unnerved. That's Seraphal Leviathan. What's she doing here? And why is she interfering? One of the Mao. Did she just say wife? Does that mean, that him and her are? Hearing them, Seraphal stepped forward, a serious expression on her delicate face, listen up. She shouted, I have seen quite enough. I refuse to stand by any longer as you all try to harm my queen and future husband, she exclaimed with a pout. Naruto stepped forward until he was standing next to Seraphal, we make quite the pair don't we Sarah chan After all, wind and ice make a dangerous combination. Seraphal grinned cheerfully, yep, yep, Naruto's wind will make my ice colder. As if hearing them, their respective elements sprang to life, wind gusting around them, their hair and clothes swaying as the wind moved about. Ice began around them as well, the wind making the ice even colder than it originally was, the ice became so cold, that cold mist began forming around the slowly growing icicles, the frightened enemies before gulped, and they saw the fog of their breaths as they breathed. A thin layer of purplish energy surrounded Seraphal, her face still carrying a serious expression as her purple remained determined, likewise, Naruto kept a serious look as well, his arms folded as a thin layer of bluish energy surrounded him. Idly. Naruto thought this was a bit overkill, he was more than enough, as evidenced by the decimation he provided, don't get Naruto wrong, 
He still desired peace more than anything and he hated killing more than anything, but during the years he lived, like he said, he thought a lot. One thing he decided was that the previous thinking he had when he was younger was much too naive and optimistic. But he still wanted to hold on to those beliefs. Eventually, he decided that he would combine both Hashirama's beliefs and Tobarama's beliefs. Hashirama believed that peace could be attained by everyone being loving and accepting. Tobarama was a little similar. The difference was that the Naidem Hokage believed that enemies that threatened peace should be eliminated with extreme prejudice. There was no room for being soft hearted. Combine the two beliefs, and it makes a rather unique and dangerous combination. Like Hashirama, Naruto gave others second chances, and sometimes thirds as well. But like Tobarama, he would not hesitate to cut you down should you be unreasonable, and you spit those chances in his face. Anyways, Naruto alone was enough to deal with exorcists and magicians, he proved that earlier, but, when you add Seraphal to the mix, it's beyond overkill, it was beyond even slaughter at that point, and plus, with their strong love for one another, they would make sure that they would protect each other's back, fighting one of them was enough, fighting the two together? That was pure suicide. The remaining exorcists and magicians seemed to understand this, and they backed away, fear in their eyes, the few spiritual beings that were with them mentally sighing in relief at the fact they didn't participate in the fight. You're all so useless. A female voice suddenly rang out. A mere moment after that voice rang out, someone else entered the battlefield. The remaining rouge exorcists and magicians all looked upon with fear as she strode forward. The woman carrying a smirk upon her features, she had a generous bust, and her light brown hair held a wavy appearance, her blue-gray eyes narrowed in anger and hate. When Seraphal saw her, the female Mao's eyes softened slightly, but hardened a moment later. Kateria, Leviathan, Seraphal murmured, her grip on her staff tightening ever so tightly. Leviathan? Is she? Naruto trailed off in a murmur, wordlessly, Seraphal nodded. Yes, she is my predecessor, the previous holder of the title Leviathan. I see, I say you make a much better Leviathan, just looking at this woman makes my skin crawl, Naruto said, the last part being told quietly, Seraphal, having heard, giggled slightly before her eyes hardened again. Kateria Sama, one of the Rouge exorcists uttered. Silence. You're all so useless, you couldn't even cause a small amount of damage to them, useless, it'll be sure to give you all proper discipline when this is over, she told them darkly, a small sneer on her face, her smirk returned as she stared down at Seraphal and Naruto. Seraphal Leviathan, she began with a smirking sneer, it's been a long time hasn't it? I can still remember quite well how you stole the title Leviathan from me. Today, I plan on regaining that title by killing you. She looked in Naruto's direction, and gave him an appraising look. I might even take your lover for myself as well, she leered. Naruto gave a blank glare, a seemingly neutral expression, a small hint of anger, and disgust passed through his eyes, but those were the only emotions that passed through. Seraphal was a different story entirely, her head tilted down, her bangs overshadowing her eyes and blocking them from view. A deep scowl adorned her face, and her grip on her staff tightened to the point where small cracks formed, the ice around creaking and becoming colder as evidenced by how they became whiter, and the cold mist becoming larger. Oh did I hit a nerve? Kateria smirked, Seraphal slowly tilted her head up, and when Kateria saw her face, she flinched, Seraphal's neutral expression was gone, replaced with a visage of nothing but pure anger, rage and hate, on the rooftop, everyone else shivered at her look, having never seen Seraphal this way. When Seraphal spoke, it made everyone shiver at the sheer amount of cold rage in her tone. I don't care if you want your title Leviathan back, but no one threatens to take Naru Tan from me, despite saying it lowly. Everyone heard her clearly, and they all felt a bead of cold sweat drip down their brow. Die, Seraphal whispered. Kateria reacted on instinct, she jumped back, the ground in front of her instantly crumbling as very sharp glaciers of ice took her place. The glaciers would have turned her into disfigured Dango if she hadn't jumped back. Kateria ducked her head, just in time as a pink staff was close to breaking her neck, and possibly caving in her skull, for Kateria. Everything was in slow motion as she looked into Seraphal's eyes. Her purple eyes expressing nothing but cold rage, a sneer on her lips as she gave Kateria her undivided attention, it was in that moment that two thoughts went through Kateria's mind, the first was, maybe I should nt have pissed off Seraphal, and her second was, I fucked up big time didn't I? Before any other thought could go through Kateria's mind, she spat out a glob of blood, the reason was because Seraphal buried her knee into Kateria's gut, the sheer force was enough for a boulder to be turned into nothing but paste, before Kateria could hope to recover, Seraphal's wings sprouted from her back, and they gave Kateria a bone-breaking slap to her face, Kateria was sent flying to ground and her face skid along the ground as she slowly stopped. When she did stop, 
Kateria groaned as she picked herself, holding her face as her healing factor kicked, healing her bruised stomach, and the injuries on her face, she let go of her face, and she snarled as the last of her injuries healed, Seraphal. You bitch. She yelled in rage, she yelled out in pain however, as Naruto appeared in front of her, the blonde burying a Rasengan into her torso. Kateria could only scream in agony as the Rasengan tore through her flesh, she looked into Naruto's angry eyes, and she wondered what she did to piss him off. No one calls Sarah Chan a bitch, Naruto angrily spoke. A moment later, Kateria was launched from her position, spinning erratically as the Rasengan remained buried in her torso. As she spun, Kateria could only scream out in pain, but she was saved from her painful venture and introduced into a new one. A large ice boulder smashed her into the ground, shards of ice burying themselves into her body. When all the debris cleared, Kateria laid on the ground, panting and groaning in pain as her injuries slowly healed. Hearing footsteps, she looked up and she gulped as Seraphal looked at her with cold eyes, Naruto joining in her cold stare. Seraphal raised her staff, preparing to finish Kateria, but she was startled when Vali appeared alongside Kateria, the wielder of Divine dividing helping the former Leviathan to her feet, on the rooftop. Everyone's eyes widened in shock at Vali's actions, while Azazel narrowed his eyes, I see, so that's how it is, Vali, the leader of the fallen angels thought. Back down below, Seraphal narrowed her eyes in a threatening manner, and given the amount of coldness in her purple orbs, it was quite intimidating, traitor, she lowly growled. I knew I was correct in my first assumption of you, Naruto coldly, a scowl on his face, Vali seemed like he wanted to say something, but he couldn't as Kateria spoke. Vali, good, with you this fight will be a lot easier, your divine dividing along with our master's gift will win us this farce, she hissed through grit teeth, her hand reaching into her clothes, and pulling out a jar where two black snakes, Naruto's eyes narrowed, recalling several bad experiences he's had with snakes, why was it that almost everything that had to do with snakes always ended being a major problem? Naruto swore that she gained some type of power up from those things he was going to start sending curses Orochimaru's way. Kateria opened the jar as Vali activated his scared gear, and Kateria smirked as she allowed the two snakes to bury themselves into her skin, instantly, her injuries healed, and she grinned as she felt her powers triple, yes, yes, she shouted as she released the full might of her power, this is what a true ultimate class devil is capable of, she gleefully shouted. A single thought went through Naruto's mind, Orochimaru you son of a bitch, even now you cause me trouble. Naruto could just imagine Orochimaru smirking in amusement, smug bastard, he glanced at Seraphal, noting the slight bead of sweat that formed due to Katarea's power up, frowning, Naruto measured Katarea's power, she was definitely stronger than Kokabiel as of now, but she was not even close to what he can do. Scowling. Naruto decided that he wanted to end this quickly, and he could only think of one way to truly do it, that, and he wanted to test just how much power divine dividing can divide, Sarah Chan, he spoke, gaining Seraphal's attention, he offered her his hand, and he gave her a loving and warm smile, returning the smile, Seraphal placed her hand in his, their fingers intertwining as they held each other's hand. Kateria laughed, what's this? sharing one last moment together before you die. Beside her, Vali narrowed his eyes, no, no they were planning something. Naruto didn't respond, instead his form became shrouded in pure energy. His clothing became like a second skin as a yellow flame energy overtook him, his eyes changing from blue to crimson red as a slit was in the place of his pupils, his whisker marks growing into large black bars, his bangs shooting up, resembling horns, his body was now covered in black tribal markings, and a yellow coat made from the energy engulfing him now adorned him, the back of the coat having tribal markings as well. Seraphal underwent a different transformation, instead of the same transformation Naruto went through, a golden cloak of pure energy engulfed her, it took the shape of a fox, two tails of energy forming behind as the energy developed ears, the golden energy felt like a second skin, and transparent tribal markings adorned the energy cloak around her, other than the energy cloak, she did not undergo any major change. Everyone could only stare at the two in awe, the sheer power they all felt rolling off them in waves, it was hard to believe that any being could radiate the amount of power they were giving off, yet it was happening before them. So much power, I don't think I can divide that much, despite those thoughts, Vali was grinning madly, anticipation welling up in him at the thought of fighting such a powerful being, seemingly sensing Vali's anticipation, Naruto narrowed his eyes, and frowned slightly. Naru Tan. I feel like I am about to start blasting away. Seraphal happily exclaimed, Naruto smirked slightly. I haven't adorned this mode in a very long while, ready to test out your new power boost Sarah Chan. Seraphal happily nodded. Yep. 
Yep. Livia Tan wants to know her new limits, then let's see just what we're capable of now. Kateria and Valley blinked, one moment, the power couple were several feet away from them. The next, the two were right in front of them, it was instinct alone that allowed Valley to dodge the fist that was aiming to smash against his face, he wasn't so lucky on the next one however, as a knee buried itself within his torso, Kateria wasn't as fortunate as Valley the first time, she couldn't dodge, nor deflect the fist that Seraphal slammed into her face, nor could she react was Seraphal jumped behind her, pulling her hair as she did so, and threw her across the field. Kateria screamed as her face skidded across the hard ground, blood and grime mixing together, and leaving a trail, her skidding movement was halted as Seraphal descended, a large hammer made entirely of ice in her hands, the black-haired beauty smashed the hammer against Kateria, burying the former leviathan into the ground as specks of ice and dirt blew everywhere. By all means, Kateria should have been unconscious or dead, however, Seraphal either felt that no mercy should be given, and that she should make sure that Kateria was dead, Seraphal lifted her hands, and ice began swirling together above her, finally, after several moments, a massive spear of ice hovered above her, the spear was large enough that one could see it from five or so miles away. Seraphal scowled down at the chasm she created, she quickly sent out a pulse of magic to determine if Kateria was alive. She sensed the former leviathan's life force, it was faint, very much so, it was all Seraphal needed to know that she was either unconscious, or on the verge of death, Seraphal was faced with two options, finish off the former leviathan, or let her slowly die, Seraphal had already made her choice even before she thought of another option, besides, that hussy tried to take her Naru Tan. With a surprisingly bloodthirsty smirk, Seraphal brought her hands down. And the ice spear followed soon after, a miniature earthquake erupted. And dust and debris was scatter along the air and ground, the ones watching the fight all had to shield their eyes as dust particles, fragments of ice, and concrete threatening to make a home in their eyes, Seraphal held a neutral expression for a moment, and she extended her senses, searching for Kateria's life signs, she couldn't find it, Seraphal knew that meant two things, that Kateria was dead, or she must have escaped. Seraphal was confident that Kateria was dead, she felt a small pang of guilt, but she quickly stomped it away, Kateria had spat in her face when she showed her kindness decades ago, even worse, she threatened to take Naru Tan from her. That hussy got what she deserved. Seraphal could think no further on the matter as Valley flew past her, smashing into a building, a bit of debris falling on top of him, Naruto stopped beside her, giving her a peck on the lips, it'll be right back honey, me and Valley are still bonding, with that said, Naruto proceeded to walk to the stack of rubble, Seraphal giggled slightly, before she looked at the surviving hostels surrounding her. You all have 10 seconds to decide which is more important, your lives, or your ignorant attempts to defeat me and my fiancé, she stated darkly, within seconds, they all back away and retreated, nodding in a satisfied manner, Seraphal tilted her head as Naruto once again stopped beside her, a frown on his face as his golden aura powered down, the golden cloak Seraphal adorned also vanished, something wrong Naruto tan she asked him. Somehow Valley escaped, I am not sure how, but one second I was waiting for him to burst out of the rubble, the next, his energy signature completely vanished, Naruto explained, I can't sense him anywhere near here. Seraphal frowned for a moment, but a large smile quickly adorned her face as she leapt at the blonde, her legs wrapping around his waist and her arms hooking around his neck, who cares? We won. That means we can finish the peace meeting. And the sooner we do that, the sooner we can snuggle in our bed, she happily exclaimed. Naruto smiled, idly caressing Seraphal's hair as he stared into her eyes. Yes, that does sound grand, the two kissed for several moments before they separated. Reluctantly, Seraphal released her grip on him, but she adamantly refused to let go of his hand. Together, the power couple made their way back to the others, the others welcomed them back with shocked, odd, and slightly fearful looks, however, that fear was vanished within an instant as seeing Seraphal's childlike personality, and Naruto's usual laid-back attitude, that still changed one fact however, everyone was inwardly afraid of Seraphal being angry, and the vast amount of power Naruto contained. The peace meeting continued, and the three fractions agreed to an alliance, this alliance would last until the Chaos Brigade was dealt with, with a very large chance of it becoming permanent, the following months were peaceful, no sudden attacks, and the three factions quietly prepared themselves for a confrontation with the Chaos Brigade, they often shared information, and tactics to better work together. It was also a time of surprise for many as well, our favorite blonde was one who received a surprise unlike any other. Please repeat that Sarah Chan, Naruto murmured blankly, his voice soft and dazed, Seraphal gazed upon her love with bright purple eyes, 
care and love flooding her eyes as she looked at him, her hands softly caressing her stomach. I am pregnant Naru Tan, the two of us are going to be a mother and father, her voice was soft and loving, confident in her love's reaction to the news, she was right to be confident, a large smile overcame Naruto's face as he wrapped his arms around Seraphal's petite hands caressed her stomach, and he kissed her before holding his ear against her stomach. Seraphal giggled, Naru Tan, the baby isn't gonna kick yet, I am only a month along after all. I know, it's just, I am so happy, Naruto responded, I am going to be a father. This is wonderful. He lifted his gaze, staring into Seraphal's eyes with such love and adoration that it made Seraphal want to melt, and I have you to thank for this Sarah Chan. He gently pressed his forehead against Seraphal's, pecking her on the lips, I love you Sarah Chan. I am so glad I met you. Seraphal smiled, pressing her body against the blondes as she maintained eye contact, I know Naru Chan, and I love you too. They were about to share another kiss when they heard Lady Citri's sudden squeal down the hall. Did you hear that honey? Finally, grandchildren, quick, call Sona, she must hear the news. I have to invite Lady Gremory and Lady Phenex to the baby shower, it will be amazing. Naruto sweat dropped, well, it's safe to say that your parents know, Seraphal nodded cheerfully, the following months of pregnancy was interesting to say the least, Seraphal had been the talk of the entire society of devils, there wasn't a day that went by where devils weren't speaking and gossiping about Seraphal's pregnancy. There was also the baby shower that Lady Citri organized, the ordeal was interesting to say the least, what with eccentric characters that many attendants possessed. Sona had been shocked to hear that her sister was pregnant, and that she was expected to be an aunt, she had initially fainted when she heard the news, in which she was delivered the news in the middle of class, Rias who heard it from Sirzex, so it was safe to say that entire school knew that Sona was going to be an aunt, when Azazel heard, he quietly murmured to himself that a mini Seraphal was gonna start wrecking havoc, he decided to have some contingency plans, just in case. When Michael and Gabriel heard, suffice to say, Gabriel had squealed, whilst Michael merely blinked, he was really surprised to be honest, he expected it happened really, just not so soon, he promptly followed Azazel's lead, there was no way he was going to let a little mini Seraphal on crack come within a mile of heaven, the other angels all felt a sense of relief within their chests, they didn't know why. Soon, the time had finally come, the day Seraphal went into labor. Naruto nervously paced back and forth, lips pursed, hands folded neatly behind his back, Sirzek slept on a chair not too far away, while Ajuka read over some notes to some experiments he was working on, both Lord and Lady Citri drank cups of coffee, they didn't really feel anything from it, but they simply loved the taste of it. Sona sat in front of Rias, a table between the two of them, the two kings were playing chess, Sona winning as she recently captured Rias' queen, the short-haired girl frowned as her queen was taken in return, an oversight on her part, one that she wouldn't make again, moving her rook, she murmured check and waited for Rias' move. 